Hello, and welcome to my Banjo-Kazooie 100% tutorial. In this part, we will be covering basic movement. The fastest movement in Banjo-Kazooie 100% is short hopping and talent trot. You can also do long hops, but those are slower. To quickly get out of talent trot, you can simply press B after a jump and you will cancel it. You can also let go of C, but that is significantly slower and should always be avoided. Before you unlock Talent Trot, the fastest movement is to do a roll, jump, and then double jump. If done fast enough, on flat ground, you can cancel the double jump animation to roll again quickly. You can also extend your roll by doing a high jump at the end of it, which will be useful in some parts of the run. While you're swimming, you can hold B to do a long swim and hold A to do a small swim. You can also hold R to turn significantly sharper underwater as you can see here. And there is absolutely no reason why you should ever let go of R while swimming or flying since it affects both. Here we're going to be covering how to skip text. All you have to do is simply press L, R, and B and it will automatically skip the text for you. Now here goes flying. You can use one feather to go high up or use a burst of feathers to go higher faster but you're not going to get as much height. Obviously the fastest movement while flying is always beak bombing. Another useful trick that we use is doing a rat -a wrap at the end of a beak bomb to quickly land. Before you start a run, you want to make sure that you hover over a file that has already seen the intro cutscene. This will allow you to skip the intro cutscene before the run starts. As soon as the screen goes dark, you want to press down start so you automatically skip the cutscene. Before you get to bottles, you want to do a short hop to gain a bit more distance. As soon as bottle starts to talk to you, skip the text. Make sure you're holding A here so the text goes by faster. Press B to decline the tutorial and keep going. Over here we're coming up to the first jump. Uh, I got a first try here, but sometimes this jump can be a bit finicky. It, we really don't have an answer to it, it just is. Um, and then you want to go up here, kill the Kali Wobble, get the honeycomb, keep going. For the rocks, make sure you're holding down B for as long as possible. It will give you more distance with the beak barge. Uh, you want to kill all five rocks, get the honeycomb. Pretty simple stuff. But yeah, so as you can see, we're doing as many roll flowers as we can in Spiral, which is the fastest way to move around, and canceling as many as we can. Uh, it's not too bad to do in Spiral since there's a lot of slopes. So it's pretty basic. Jump over here. So coming up to the stomp, there are two ways you can do this. The difficult way, which will be done first. You jump, wait a little bit, rat a tat rat, get to it. Uh, over here, the easier way is to roll, jump, rat a tat rat into the stump, and you'll get up. Here's another example. Make sure you touch the stump before you do it as well. You can also just high jump if the other methods are too difficult for you. Uh, but that is the three different ways you could do it. Uh, optimally, you'd either want to do the rat a tat rat across or in front of it. Here you want to make sure you jump before you hit the top of the tree, so you don't get that little animation that makes you stop. It's a lot easier to deal with that way. Keep going, keep going. After you get this honeycomb, after you do the jump, you want to wait a little bit, then rat a tat rat. That will give you more distance, so you don't have to swim as long, and you can land on the water and keep rolling, which is again optimal. Up here we're coming up to bottle skip, so essentially what you're going to do is you're going to high jump, Push up a little bit on the joystick and let go. You don't want to hold up for too long or you'll gain too much distance. When you land on the corner, you'll trigger a cutscene. Just like that. If you look at the input display, it's going to be very easy to understand. But again, like hold up just a little, then let go as you high jump, and then you should skip it pretty easily. Again, as you enter the lair, hold start. That'll skip the cutscene. No problem there. Uh, make sure you're skipping text as soon as you enter here, and then do a roll right away. So the reason you want to skip the grungy text here is if you don't, it'll overlap with the jiggy the jiggy text and it will delay the other text box so the grungy text box is going to go away if you can't slip as you grab the jiggy then there will be a little bit of delay before the other uh, text box shows up which will lose like half a second or something so you just want to cancel it right at the beginning and have to worry about it over here make your way to the puzzle put in the jiggy skip the text and then you open up mumbo's pretty basic stuff again if you watch the basic movement video uh, the basic movements basically the same up until we get to Mumbo's. Something I forgot to premise in the last part is we do use a glitch that we set up before the run, which is called FFM. There will be a video tutorial and pacement explaining it in the info section. 
All you really need to know for now is that it gives you a few moves early, minus eggs, flying, and gold feathers. So as of right now, I have every move in the game minus those three. And again, explanations will be in the info section. So let's begin with Mumbo's. Like in part zero, I explained that short hops and talon trot is the fastest form of movement. So that's what we'll be doing. Uh, for this Jinjo, we just do a long jump up here, grab it. Oops, jump up here, fall down, get the token. And you want to get these three notes. These three, and the next set. And you want to go straight for the for the hut. Here, just do a long jump, cancel Talon Trot, break it open, get all the notes. Break the second one, keep going. Now we're gonna have Termite Hill. I am going to demonstrate two ways to do this. Uh, I'll demonstrate the easy way first, or the easy way first. Uh, when you come in, you do a high jump, mash B, bear punch, do this. Then you can roll on every platform. You don't have to roll, but rolling does give you a bit of window to uh, keep jumping. Let me explain how you don't fall down here. Let's kill this termite. So the way slopes work in this game is when your shadow goes over flat ground, the slope timer resets. So if you jump up here and you stay long enough on the platform, you're just going to slide down. If you jump up here, jump back and jump back on, you can stay on here forever. So the way we navigate around here is we just jump around the edges of the platform, then land on it for a few seconds, not a few seconds, but like a little bit, and then you can keep going up. Uh, whoops. So we'll keep going, get the notes here. Again, you can bear punch or roll on any of these platforms if you feel like you need the extra window to jump. Uh, here you can do this in one jump, but you do need a precise angle. The easiest way to do this is to just do two jumps and jump up here. Also this is now considered a slope so you can stand on here for as long as you want so you don't have to worry about this one. Uh, now I'm going to show you the second way which is the more difficult way to do this but it is faster. Jump back down to the bottom. Go up here. So you did it in Talon Trot. So you start at the beginning, you jump, go up here and this also doesn't count as a slope when you're in Talon Trot since you can actually walk here. So you jump up here, get the token. Again jump around. Whoops. These angles are just a lot more difficult to do. It's their really only big downside to them. And Talon Trot, you'd have to just really practice it. Here normally you just ride a tat wrap, try to kill the termite, grab all the notes, go back and Talon Trot. But yeah, this is just about getting used to the angles. If you really want to run the Talon Trot method, the best way to do it would just be to look at the input display and see the angles I'm using. But doing one jump here is also a lot easier. Um, but if there's any part you're not comfortable with, like I said, you could just do it out of Talon Trot and just jump around. It's a lot easier and you don't need as precise angles since you have a better control in the movement. So as soon as you get out, walk out and Talon Trot. Get up here, do two jumps, do a long jump, get up here, grab the Jiggy. Uh, cancel the text, you're gonna get another text box after this. Something I should premise is most Jiggies in the game, when you grab them, you don't want to be in Talon Trot. That one doesn't matter because you have a text box right after so it doesn't slow you down. But when you get a Jiggy in Talon Trot, you'll have a little animation where Banjo gets out of Talon Trot. So usually you want to cancel it before you get a Jiggy. So that's something you should know before we keep going. There is one of the parts where you don't have to. You just want to get it in Talon Trot since you don't lose any time to it. But here before you get this Jiggy, you want to cancel Talon Trot. Start the animation right away. Uh, for here, optimally you want to do a hop from this part of the platform to the slope. So you go in Talon Trot and jump over here like this. This can be a bit tricky and you do need a good angle for it. Uh, alternatively, you could just jump on the ground, jump up, and keep going, which is a lot easier. Just depends what you're comfortable with. But doing a long hop to the slope right away is faster. Here, you just want to grab the notes, turn your camera, pretty basic, get the Jinjo. Keep going down, get all the notes, pretty basic stuff. Here, uh, a lot of runners choose to turn the camera around to get these three notes. Personally, I keep it in front of me, and I just grab them like this. So you can mess around with that, see what you're comfortable with. Here you want to turn the camera, grab those. Uh, so before we get to Conga, Conga can be a bit of RNG sometimes, uh, like that. When he beats his chest like that, he can be throwing an orange, so when you show up, you have to pay attention for that. Uh, and the timing for Conga is whenever you hear like a little swoosh noise, that's where the orange is going to land from where you're standing, or when he swings his arm. Uh, you'll have a good idea of what it looks like when I show it to you, but uh, just want to jump down here. He beat his chest there. 
missed it. But like, whenever you hear the swoosh noise, kind of like that, wherever you're standing is where the orange is going to be. So, there I missed a switch because he beat his chest. That kind of just throws me off. Whoops. Just want to wait here. Get it. You want to get those two switches. Whoops, he can still hit me from here. That's annoying. So for Chimpy over here, we do get the orange from the tree. Should have mentioned that, but we do. Over here, you can't do anything. You can only carry the orange. But luckily, if you jump before you get past this tree stump, you're not going to start the animation. So you can roll, double jump the Chimpy. No problem. Like this. Whoops. It's a bit too early. Kind of like this. Then if you get close enough to him, when the Jiggy spawn is going to fall on top of you. So get up here. Jiggy. Grab it. Done. So make sure you jump before passing that tree. And then you'll be fine. So over here you want to get in Talon Trot. If you do just a long hop, you'll just get up here, no problem. Uh, here's Quick Talon Trot. So we're, we only learned three moves in this run, but we're gonna use this trick every time we learn a move. Uh, if you get right in front of bottles like this, and then you enter Talon Trot and mash B right away, you're gonna start talking to bottles, and you're already gonna be going in Talon Trot, kind of like this. Here, press L R and B, cancel the text. So that's a little trick. So you're already in Talon Trot, and you can jump over to the platform. So before we get to Kanga, uh, if you ever get hit by an orange as you're shooting the eggs, you cannot damage him again until he beats his chest. So you really got to make sure you don't get hit here. Um, so we're going to go up, we're going to shoot an egg, cancel the first text box, then wait for him to start throwing the second row of, uh, not eggs, oranges or whatever. And then we're going to shoot another egg and then jump to the next platform. So we get up here, shoot. You want to jump back, and then as soon as he starts, like, you know, throwing back his arm to throw the next orange, that's when you want to go back and shoot the egg. And after that, you need to wait for him to start throwing the oranges, because if you go too early and he doesn't throw them, he's not going to throw them at you, and then you can't hit him again. So you got to be careful about that. Uh, so what we're going to do over here is we're going to shoot Kongo from this platform. Uh, if you're really uncomfortable with the angles, the easy way to do it is to go and see up, look at him, just shoot the egg, and that's going to get him right away. But... If you press down left and you shoot three eggs from going down left to left directly, you should hit him pretty easily, kind of like this. Here's a better example. There we go. So yeah, on the joystick from down left to left, shoot three eggs from the center of the tree here where the token would be, and you should hit him no problem. If that doesn't work well for you, again, you just go in first person, look at him, shoot. Uh, and yeah, normally when you shoot him too, you want to jump to this platform before the cutscene goes off, and then you're just ahead. So, after that, the cutscene would stop here, and then you just want to jump over here, get the witch switch, and you're fine. So that's how you do conga. Uh, it's pretty basic. There's a bit of RNG here, but it's not too bad. Roll down, get this jiggy, and then you want to hold right, and you will land on the switch. Then go up, and you're going to get the jiggy. Pretty basic stuff. Over here, we're going to get Talon Trout again. Keep going. Here, we want to get all the notes. Kind of important. Uh, be careful with these termites. They can be like... They can just have like a huge speed boost, and sometimes they're really unpredictable, so they can hit you pretty easily. Over here, we're going to get these huts. And we're going to get the Jinjo. So here, the best way to get the Jinjo is to make sure you land on the top of the hut so you can get Talon Trout faster. And fall down, get the Jinjo, do a hop. Here, you want to cancel Talon Trot before you jump over here. Because if you don't, your momentum for your high jump is screwed up. So, here you do the slide, cancel Talon Trot, jump up here, and then you just high jump. If you cancel Talon Trot on the platform higher, your momentum is screwed up and it's really inconsistent. Here, you're going to start walking off, go on Talon Trot. It's going to look like this. And get into Momo's Hut. You got to be careful here. As soon as you get in here, you want to jump up left. If you don't and you get too close to the mumbles, you're going to trigger a few text boxes and you want to avoid those. Here, you just walk around, get the notes, and you just walk out. Uh, before we go out, so the next thing we're doing is doing Juju. And as soon as you walk out, he's always going to be on the same cycle. So this has to be done pretty fast. Uh, one thing you have to keep in mind about Juju, if there's a lot of lag in that area, some of the hitboxes for Juju are not going to load at all. So you have to wait like a second for it to load like some of the stuff in the game. So I'll give you a good example. Hopefully none of the eggs are not going to go in because of that, but I'll show you what it looks like. So as soon as we get out, we're going to do a short hop, jump on this, beak bust it, grab the note, forget the trophy, jump up here, and then Juju should be right on your path. I turn the camera three times, shoot an egg, whoops, 
Shoot another egg. Jump, run a tight rat. Get this. I turn the camera twice. Hold down, and then Juju should be right on track for you to hit him again. So sometimes, so what creates lag in this area is the purple guys that are walking around. So if we're looking at these guys, there's a lot of lag. If you're looking away from them, there's not a lot of lag. If you notice there is a lot of lag or they're in the camera, I would suggest taking your time with Juju and just walking with them and making sure you wait a little bit because the hitbox most likely won't load. Another easy way is to just stay in front of them, shoot two eggs instead of one, and the second one should always hit no matter what. Uh, so after you get the jiggy, you just want to roll, jump up here, beak bust, and then as soon as you land, roll into the jiggy so you grab it early. After that, you get in Talon Trot. We're going to clean up the few notes that we have here. Grab these. Get this jiggy. Again, make sure you cancel Talon Trot before you get a jiggy. Keep going. Uh, this slope coming up, it is a slope, like the this part. So you want to do a short hop, then do a long hop, just to make sure you don't slide down. If you do slide down, that's pretty bad, and you have to climb all the way back up. So we'll do a short hop, long hop, then we'll get to the honeycomb. Uh, there's a trick coming up called a quick dive. Uh, we use it a few parts in the run, but what it looks like is you're going to get into the water and fall to the bottom right away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump down, let go of Z, then start sliding off the platform. Uh, and then usually how long you slide on the platform for is going to determine when the animation starts and how long your quick dive is. Because the way the glitch works is you're going to fall as far down as the animation takes to undo since you can't enter swimming during the animation. So the game's just like, oh, that doesn't work. So you just fall down. So I'm just going to jump off, let go of Z, do a dive, fall down. Should look like that. Here we're just going to get the notes. Whoops. I had a bad angle there. I was trying to explain everything. But yeah, should be pretty basic. Grab all the notes. Jump up. Now before we get this Jinjo, here we're going to do a Jiggy Jig skip. The way this one works is as soon as we get the Jinjo, the Jiggy is going to jump into the air. And it's going to start falling down. As it's falling down, we're going to want to jump, grab it in midair and fall in the water. Jump in the water again, and then the game will trigger that we've got a Jiggy. Um, and then after that, you jump back on the platform, jump to the bridge. Uh, so it's, it's going to look pretty intimidating, but it's not that bad. It's just getting the timing down, so it might take a bit of practice. But I'll show you what it looks like. You want to make sure you jump uh, towards this part of the platform, like the middle here, since this is the shortest distance from the middle to the water. If you jump too close to this side or the top, you're going to land on the platform no matter what, since the distance is longer. So I have the camera set up like this, and then normally I just hold upright, and you always make it. And there I just did a double jump in the water, quickly cancel it, get the jiggy. Uh, if you don't do that, and you jump on the platform again without getting that jiggy, the animation's still gonna go when you jump back on the platform, so you have to be careful about that. So after that, you jump back here, again, Talon Trot, get this note, jump, get this one, get this one, and then do two jumps, and get the last four. After that, I just wanna head out here, before we go out, whoops, kill this guy, just wanna explain this. I like to have the camera set up to be in the middle position, since there are three positions for the camera. They're zoomed in, barely zoomed in, and zoomed out. I like to have it in the second position, since that's when the camera's a lot more consistent, so the angle you're using to get up there will stay so you can just land on the pad no problem. If you have a big camera angle like the zoom that it's just gonna flip around and the small one just creates more lag. Um, and normally when you go out of the world you always want to make sure you're in talent trot. For mumbos you want to make sure you're not in talent trot since there's a text box we have to skip right away and we want to make sure we're able to do that and if we're in talent trot it's gonna be really slow. So before we get on the pad, cancel talent trot, hit the pad. Here you want to cancel text right away, cancel one of bottles text and then we're going to have a second slope abuse to get the Jiggy on top of Mumbo's Mountain. So I'm going to show you two ways to do this. The hard way. So you're going to do a high jump. Roll or bear punch. You should do a bear punch just because I waited there. So you're going to do a high jump, bear punch. Jump back. Do two jumps. Roll. Jump. Beak bust. Then you'll get it. That's the harder way to do it. Um, it's not too bad, but it'll take a bit of practice. The easier way is to do a high jump, bear punch, jump back. Two jumps, roll, whoops, <laughs> I messed it up. But yeah, instead of doing a hop, you're going to do a high jump and then beak bust, which will give you more height. Whoops, I keep doing a beak bust. My bad, sorry. I don't do this backup, roll backup, the easier strat all that often, so. Whoops. Damn, getting cooked. All right. Okay, there we go. So you want to do a high jump instead of a small hop, and then get a lot more distance as you saw, because we even landed at the top, so. That's the way, or the easier way to do it, is just to do a high jump instead of a small hop before the beat bust. Uh, and then if you can 
wait like a second instead of doing a bear punch and do a roll, you do get a bit more height off the platform, like this. And then you can do two jumps, roll, beak bust, then you get a bit more height, which could help, but it's usually not that big of a deal. When you're starting off, you'd probably just want to do a high jump if you're not comfortable doing a short hop. After we get that jiggy, we get in Talon Trot, and we're going to make our way to TTC. Go up here. So because of the FFM glitch, Bottles is never going to talk to you here. So you can like get really close to the door, but before you start, the note doors work kind of like the jiggies, where if you trigger the cutscene and you're in Talon Trot, it's going to wait a second for you to get out of Talon Trot. So you want to make sure you cancel it before you hit the door, like this. Press B, cancel it, then it'll start the cutscene, and you don't have to deal with the little animation there. And here we're going to do a glitch called Quick Talon Trot. We'll see if I can get it. But right before you hit the cut or the loading zone, you want to enter Talon Trot, and that'll push you a bit forward. And you'll hit the loading zone as you're going in Talon Trot, and you'll skip entering the animation. Whoops. It's a bit tricky when I'm not actually doing a run. Whoops. Doing it too early. What the hell? Come on, man. Whoops. Okay, we'll start from further behind. Whoops. I actually try to show it to you guys. We'll jump back. That's how you're not supposed to do that. Like that. See? I just go up in the loading zone right away. Just took a few tries. Here we're gonna jump, change the camera, get in here, mash A. Oh, that's not supposed to happen. So normally there's a grunty text box that's going to trigger when you enter this room. And then it's gonna overlap in bottles, it's not gonna give you a text box there. So you wanna go straight to that jiggy, mash A, and then cancel the grunty text box after. Uh, so with the Clan Gears puzzle, we're only going to have two uh, bottle text boxes. Normally we'd have three in a run. Uh, I'll show you, or I'll explain why that matters. Because Bottles is going to teach us how to put in all the pieces of the puzzle. So, jump over here. So when you do a jump with the jump pad, when you land to a new platform, you want to double jump right away to make the animation smaller. Kind of like that. Instead of just like jumping and not canceling it, just landing. It's a bit slower. So you want to do the jump. Double jump, jump. And here, you're going to... Put one jiggy in, second one, and then we get the bottle text box. Normally we would have two. After we put in the first jiggy, we would get one text box and the second one, second text box. And then we press Z when there's only three pieces missing to fill the whole puzzle. Except some bottles teach you how to do that. But normally you'd have two bottles text box here, but you would have zero on the TTC puzzle. That's just because the grunty text box already went earlier. So I was explaining things. That's how that looks. And for every puzzle, after the Clankers one, we're always going to press Z to fill in all the pieces right away. So now we're going to head to TTC. What we're going to do here is three short hops and do a long hop, and we're going to reach the platform at the bottom. But after the third hop, we're going to wait like just, just a little bit, just to get a little bit more distance, and then short er, long hop. It's going to look like this. One, two, three. Wait. Jump. And boom, you're going to land down here. And you just keep going. Over here, we're going to do a few hops. Land on this stone. Long hop. Two short hops, long hop into TTC. If you've missed Spiral Mountain or Mumbo's Mountain, I would highly recommend watching those. There is a lot of useful information that can be acquired from them. A uh, friendly reminder that we are using FFM. And if you know, if you don't know what FFM is, uh, part one, Mumbo's or part two, Mumbo's Mountain has all the information about that. So we're gonna start off right here. We're gonna go in Talon Trot, and we're just gonna walk down, grab this note, short hop, short hop, short hop, cancel Talon Trot. So here, normally you would jump from this angle, but I'm going to explain this. You want to aim for this part of the of the rail. This is where you want to be jumping to. And then after you jump, you're going to wait two Kazooie noises and then let go of A. So I'll show what it looks like. Jump, double jump, like that. The two in eh, eh, or whatever. You wait for those and then you let go. Aim for the blue Jinjo and you should get it. So basically what happens in that part is the game keeps your momentum going because you're stuck on the platform then you gain more momentum and you're able to dive down to grab the uh the jinjo so over here we're just gonna keep going keep jumping jump over this crab turn over here over to this tree so there's two ways you can grab the notes on the tree uh if you're a new player i would highly recommend just walking around grabbing them it's really easy if you're more comfortable with the movement you can always just go in town trot do a little circle grab all of them uh even if you're Doing them with Banjo, as soon as you get the last note, you want to go in Talon Trot, jump upright, do a long hop, just dive into here. As soon as you get in this room, old R, up left, get these notes. Over here, just want to navigate your way to this piece of gold, come out. As soon as you get out of here, hold down right, then you'll surface. Do two double jumps, and you should land. Go in Talon Trot, keep going. Over here, you want to grab three feathers. 
and make sure before you talk to bottles okay so this sucks uh that you're not too close that you're gonna jump off because that is slower and it's gonna reset your position you want to be around this part a bit to the side when you talk to him he's not gonna make you jump away and you're gonna be closer to jumping off the platform because we're gonna jump off the platform so here we learn flying you don't want to do a short hop jump double jump get this token go up here break this open Again, we're going to do a little trick here where we walk forward, enter Talent Trot, and get in the loading zone. And as soon as we get in the, last, in the next loading zone, we're going to do a quick dive right away to get the piece of gold. So if you don't know how to do a quick dive, I would suggest watching part two of Mumbo's Mountain. I explain it in there. So, so like this, jump in here, hold left, let go of Z, jump down, get the gold. Might take a bit of practice, but after a while, it's not too bad. Here you get the token, do a beak bust, get out. So Blubber is entirely RNG, um, he's going to be walking around, sometimes he'll be in a good spot, sometimes he won't, you can't really control that. But as soon as you get out of the song zone, you want to roll towards him, give him a piece of gold. Get lucky like me and you mess around, you'll get good RNG. Uh, but yeah, if you can, you want to land in that specific spot to grab the Jiggy, but sometimes Blubber could be like sitting over here or something and you just don't have that luxury, right? So if he is, it's not worth waiting for him to move around since it only saves a few seconds, you just want to jump to him right away, give him the gold and jump back and get the Jiggy. After you get the Jiggy, go on Talent Trot, keep going, grab all these notes, jump up here. So before you hit the top of this pole, so if you hit the top of a pole, there'll be a little animation so you can reach the top of it. So what you want to do before you hit the top is just do a jump, and you'll grab the Jinjo and then you can just fall down right away without having to see that animation. And here we're going to have the first flying section. These for new players are very intimidating, for good reason, they're not easy. Uh, but I will be explaining my setup for all of these. So what we're going to do here is as soon as we start flying, we're going to count six flaps. And I'll explain how you count the flaps. After the sixth one, you're going to hold it down on the joystick for two flaps, and then get the note, use a feather, turn around, and go for the jiggy. I'll show you what it looks like. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. Turn around, get the note, use a feather. Aim yourself for the middle of this chest, and then as soon as you get inside of it, Hold down, wait for it to push you down, use a feather. And then normally you would just beak bomb over here, but I'll show this again. Um, so I'll show another way to do it that's a lot easier. You can wait, like when you're waiting to fall down, you can wait like a flap and a half instead of two. And you can go to the back of the room, then turn and go down further. And then it'll make it a lot easier to get the note. So I'll show you what that looks like. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. And you can just turn around further down and you'll still grab the note. Keep going. <laughs> Fly over here. Hold down again. Get the jiggy. Already got it. Then you're gonna want to beak bomb over here. At the end of beak bomb, press B. Right at tat wrap. And then you wanna hit this X. For new runners, I would highly suggest not taking damage here, as if you are new, you're probably gonna take extra damage uh, elsewhere. And you don't want to backtrack for damage since the health routing is pretty tight in TTC if you do all the damage boosts. So here you can just jump down, double jump, and you'll land right here, no problem, without taking damage. The alternative way to do that is to jump in Talent Trot, fall down, take fall damage. And as you're taking fall damage, you fall down at the side of this platform, double jump back on. But I wouldn't recommend doing that. <coughs> We're going to keep going over here. But for this part, I highly recommend holding hard as you're jumping off this platform. Because the way the camera works in this game is if there's geometry in the way, and you cannot see Banjo, the camera will flip 180 degrees. But if you're holding R at any time, the camera cannot flip. It won't. So when you're jumping towards this box, there's going to be a wall blocking your way, usually. So you want to make sure you're holding R while you're jumping towards this box. For this next section, you want to make sure the camera is zoomed in, since these stairs cause a lot of lag. So we're going to zoom in the camera, jump over here. If you're new, I would highly recommend crouching here, aligning your camera, make it aligned like this, and then just keep going. You gotta jump straight. Up left, keep going straight. Jump in this chest, and then you're, more, you're, you're gonna turn the camera two times. See right? Then you should have a decent angle up here. You can keep going. Here we're gonna do a quick dive. That was a pretty poor one, but it, it's pretty basic. You quick dive down here, get this jiggy, keep going. So normally, like I said, when you're jumping to a platform, you wanna double jump onto it. But for this one, you just want to do a hop, since the spacing's a, uh, because the spacing for this platform is pretty high, and most platforms in the game aren't. And if you double double jump, it's pretty finicky. So you just want to do a short hop and then get in Talent Trot. Over here, wait, slide for the second note, and then keep going. You don't want to jump from the first note to the second note because this crab will hit you. 
So you always want to do it that way. So after you jump down, you slide from first to second note, then do a hop for the third one. And here we're gonna keep going, keep jumping, keep jumping. And here comes the second flying section. So we hit the X, then you're gonna roll towards the fly pad, start flying, turn around, and beak bomb towards the alcove. There honestly like isn't a setup for this. This is one of the flying sections where I don't have a setup for personally. I'm just comfortable with flying since this new TTC route was added after the fact. Uh, but I can show you a good way to do it. That's pretty nice for new players. So it's a bit slower, but I'll show it to you. So you don't want to be bombed too far down for this method. About halfway. You want to turn around and hug the wall. Kind of like this. Keep holding it, and then you want to grab the jiggy. Hugging the wall is the best way. So you're going to use three feathers here. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Beak bomb. I'll try to explain the rest of that after we get this jiggy. It just it happens so fast it's hard to explain. Just get this jiggy. Um, so, yeah. So you want to hug the wall, hold down, and as soon as you grab the jiggy, you want to use one feather. After that, you want to make sure you turn around right away because if you fly into the wall, it's going to push you down and you're going to land. As soon as you get out of the outco, you want to use three feathers, one more to get the Jinjo, seven after the Jinjo, then Beak Bomb, and you should get close enough to j the Jiggy to grab it while flying and then landing. If you have a really bad angle and you're able to grab the Jiggy but you can't land comfortably, you can always Beak Bust to land and you'll land right away, assuming you're not over a big platform because I need to be on top here. So here we're going to jump to the jump pad, get the first note, do a full rotation around, get all the notes, and then jump down. Whoops. There you're supposed to double jump. I missed it. But if you double jump, then beak bust, you're not going to take damage there. Although I probably do need to take damage for uh, the death warp coming up at the end of this level. So here after that, you jump down here and get these three notes. Uh, there's two ways you can do this part. You want to get this Jinjo, and we're going to jump upright. But you can jump to take fall damage, or just walk down upright, and you're not going to take fall damage. Uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, I need to take one more damage, so I will be jumping upright. Just show you what it looks like. Double jump, and then you'll take fall damage, and then you can cancel it right away. Uh, if It is slower to not take the fall damage since you're going to have to wait the full sliding down animation. Uh, but if you're low on health and you can't afford to take that damage, it's always a good alternative. Uh, up here, we're going to do another quick dive. Honestly, you can stand wherever you like. Usually I stand about the corner of this platform, and it works fine. So we're just going to jump, do a short slide, and then let go of Z. And we're going to quick dive to the honeycomb, like that. Here a snacker comes. After you're further ahead than snacker, you can start double jumping. If you double jump before that, there's a high chance a snacker will catch up to you and he is going to hit you. As soon as you land here, you want to roll, high jump, turn the camera twice. Once you get up here, you're going to get in talent trot. And now we're going to do nipper. So what's going to happen is we're going to jump in front of nipper. And we're going to jump into him. And then we will turn around as we're inside of him and then do three out of tat wraps and kill him right away. Uh, one thing I need to mention is that there's a few text boxes in the game that you can cancel without pressing L and R. This is one of them, and you want to make sure you do not press R here. If you press R, the camera will turn around you, and it will screw you up. I can guarantee. So after you do the little jump down, you're going to mash B to cancel the text, and then jump inside of Nipper. Turn around as soon as you do your first rat tat wrap, and then mash A and B alternatively to rat tat wrap twice. So the reason you want to turn around after you jump into him before your first rat attack wrap is the hitbox for his face is in front of him. And if you're facing outward, it's a lot harder to hit him and a lot less consistent. So after you get into him, you just want to turn around, keep doing the rat attack wrap, and that's good. And this loading zone is also really weird. Uh, the best way to get into it is just to get in town trot right away and just jump, and it'll trigger it right away. Sometimes it doesn't if you just try to walk into it. So here you want to jump. If you miss any of these notes, don't worry about it. We're going to walk out so you can just forget about it and grab him on the way out. So before we go over here, there's going to be two crabs. They're very finicky. And they're very annoying. Uh, we're going to do a short hop after the last note, and then do a long hop into the jiggy. It's going to look like this. Whoops. Let's reset it. Obviously, now the crabs are going to be in awful positions, but whatever. Whoops. Yeah. This jiggy is honestly like one of the most annoying ones to grab in the game, but you just grab it, and it's fine. The crabs can screw you over. Uh, you can always kill them if they're honestly in your way. It's not that big of a deal. But optimally, you'd want to get out of here, do a short hop, long hop, and just grab the jiggy. And again, make sure to cancel uh, Talent Trot before you grab it. And more so in this room, because if you get it in Talent Trot, your hitbox is going to stay after you fall down, so the crabs can also still hit you. Uh, I'm going to teach two methods here. 
on how to get to the next area we're going to. I'll teach the hard method first, easier method next. If you're doing the heart method, zoom out the camera right away, short hop, turn C right, short hop, C right, hit this tree, jump up, jump to this leaf, and we're going to aim. So if you look at the part here, there's a dark part, right? Where the dark part is the highest is where you're going to aim to jump for this. So you want to get in town trot, aim for that part, and then do a right attack wrap and you'll get pushed up. That's how you do that. It saves like about 0.5 seconds. It's not huge. Uh, if you're not comfortable doing this, I would highly suggest not doing it, doing the alternative route. There's no reason to. But honestly, if that setup helps you, aiming for the higher part, and you can do it very easily like this. Oops. It's pretty easy to miss, but if you can just do it, don't worry about it. It's fine. There we go. So yeah, it looks like that. Make sure you're always jumping, or red attack wrapping at the height of your jump too, because if you're slightly lower down, you're just not going to get pushed up there. Uh, the other way, which is the easy way, which I would recommend doing, is as soon as you get out of nipper, start jumping this way. Just use this jump pad. It's that easy. Go up here, cancel the animation, get the three notes. Here you skip a note, since you're going to be walking back, so you grab two. Hit this X, keep going. Keep going. Alright. So here we're going to be doing leaky. So your camera here is very important. And I'll teach a backup as well. So here you want your camera to be centered with these notes. And then you do not touch it anymore. And also make sure you're zoomed out. It's important as well. So you're going to get these three notes and then jump to the tree. If by chance you fall down and you jump onto the tree, your camera is going to tilt a little. If that does happen, I will teach you an alternative setup for Lee Key that will let you still make it without having to mess with your camera easily. Uh, if you use, if you jump on the tree back twice, I'm not sure if this works, you can mess around with it. But if you somehow fall down and have to jump on the tree, there are two methods to do Lee Key if that happens. The first one, if your camera was fine, you want to aim for this circle on the floor. That one right there. And then you just want to poop two eggs. Like this. Oh, whoops. Yeah, sometimes the eggs won't go in, so you'll we'll put the last one on you go in town trot rush for these three notes um, after that I'll teach you the other method for leaky it's not too bad whoops oh yeah always brings you out of town trot after that cutscene so if you do fall down and you have to jump on the tree you're gonna look for this spot on the ground this dark little spot right here when I'm standing right in front you want to jump on it and usually your camera angle you're gonna be lined up with the, the molehill so your left arm is gonna be lined up with bottles molehill then you just hold down poop two eggs if you look down, I'll just land and leak you like that. So that's the alternative way of doing it. So if you have your camera set up properly and you fall down and you have to jump on the tree, then you will automatically have the proper camera to do this anyways. So just a good uh, good setup to know. For whatever reason, your camera is just screwed beyond repair. So after that, after the cutscene, we go back and tell and trot, get, get these three notes. We move towards our last flying section, which I would say is the hardest one by far now. Um, so we'll get to it. Alright, so we're going to start flying, and we're going to get a Mumma token. And it's going to be very difficult for me to explain this, but I'll try explaining it right away. So there's an alcove out there, right? So after we get the Mumma token, as soon as Banjo reaches the top of that alcove, you're going to hold up. And as soon as you do, you just keep holding up, and you should get the three notes. Uh, I want to explain this now, since it happens very quickly. It's kind of difficult to explain in the, the heat of the moment. So you want to get over here, wait for the top of Kazooie's head to hit the token, use a feather, get to the top of the alcove, hold up, you should get these three notes. So up here, we're coming up to this Jinjo. I'm going to teach the easy way to do this. The hard way is simply wait till your camera is like neutral and it's not moving anymore, use a feather beak, bo uh, beak bomb, and you're going to grab it. But it's a bit harder than that. You can easily crash land and get screwed over. But I'm going to teach the easy way to do it. So what you're going to do is you're going to wait till you hit this wall, fall down a little bit, use a feather, wait, beak bomb, and you just grab the ginger. Over here, we're going to get the honeycomb, and then use two feathers right after. Two feathers, beak bomb up here. Then we're going to grab this jiggy while flying. Boom, turn around, keep going, fly down. Get this jiggy, fly up, beak bust. Uh, if you're not comfortable, you can always kill this crab. If you're lucky, the crab will be hovering over the X, and you can kill him and hit the hex at the same time. Over here, you want to make sure you start your, your rotation with this note. So we're going to pick up this note first. This one, this one, this one. Up here. Jump to the tree. Get the two feathers. Jump. Hold down here. You're going to have 91 notes here. Jump out. Keep going. Here, you want to wait a little bit. 
do a long jump, and you'll keep Talon Trot. Head over here, get the X and the Crab at the same time. Use an egg, pop that open. Uh, you can always use two eggs there if you're not comfortable, just to hit the chest, so it's a bit more likely. Normally I just wait a little bit, then shoot the egg when I know the hitbox is going to be there. I just know it by memory at this point. But that is another way to do it, just shoot two eggs towards him, and you should easily get it. Then obviously, uh, the crab, the way it works is you want to hit towards the outer of his hitbox. So not the middle of him, but like his pincers. And you should hit the X and the crab at the same time. Sometimes it's going to happen where you only hit the crab and you have to beak bust again to hit the X. It's unfortunate, but it's going to happen. Here, long hop. Keep Talon Trot going. We're almost done. Over here, uh, I'm going to hit this part, do a long jump, and you're going to fall on top of the castle. Get this note, jump, get this note, fall down, and get in the sand castle. Do a short hop, cancel, and start the hardest puzzle in the game. You can spell Banjo Kazooie. It's really hard, trust me. So you just do roll jumps, beak bust, hit all this, uh, the switches, or the letters, I guess. Hit all of them, spell Banjo Kazooie, in this order. It's pretty easy to remember. Here you want to roll, get these two notes, jump, double jump, roll, fall off. Get the other notes, keep spelling Kazooie. And here we're going to do a death warp. Get hit by this crab get hit again, jump, beak bust. Usually you're supposed to die there, but I got unlucky. Sometimes you will move out of the way, but the way it would look is you would fall down after you grab the jiggy and just die. I died anyways, I just had to see the cutscene. But uh, the easiest way to do it is with three health, you're gonna walk, take one hit, position yourself, look at the shadow for the jiggy, take a second hit, jump, beak bust, grab it, die. That is by far the easiest way to do that. You can also do it with two health, but it's a lot more difficult and you don't have that uh, buffer room to look for the positioning of the jiggy, you just gotta go for it. So I should, you should only honestly do that if you're just winging it and you just hope it works. So now, like I said, normally when you leave a world, you always wanna be in Talon Trot. So we're gonna go in Talon Trot and then we're gonna just jump off. You wanna hold down right as soon as you leave so you get that extra little boost. Jump up here, cancel Talon Trot, high jump. I'm gonna grab a few feathers over here. You want to make sure you have at least 15, that's the bare minimum. And if you're new, I would honestly recommend having anywhere between 18 to 20 at this point. I missed a few on one of the flight pads or whatever, and I flew around and used an extra, a few extra feathers, and I'm at 16, which is a fine number. But anywhere between 18 to 20 would be really good here, so you need to grab a few extra feathers. Feel free to, it's not a big time loss. Go over here, grab this jiggy. Now we're going to make our way to Clanker, which isn't too bad. Jump down here after you get the jiggy, keep going. Now we're going to grab the vine, jump up here, double jump, get in Talon Trot. So here, you can land on the side of this pipe, so you don't enter swimming, and you stay in Talon Trot. That's what we're going to do. Whoops. Bad camera. But yeah, like that. If you land in the middle, you're just going to get out of Talon Trot. Just want to make sure you land on the outer end, and keep going. We're going to go hit this Warp Cauldron, which will only become relevant later in the run. So we're not going to see him for a while. So we get him, and here what you're going to do is just walk off. Wait a little bit, jump, and then you'll get pushed on top of this pipe. You want to make sure that you don't jump off, because if you do, we'll kill this guy. Whoops. Kill him. Put him out of the way. If you do jump and you try to jump right away, it's kind of finicky. I find that sometimes it just doesn't work depending on your angle. So I prefer just waiting. Yeah, it does there, but if you just wait and then jump, whoops. If you wait and then jump, you always get pushed up no matter what, no matter where you're coming from. And then you just want to grab that token. Do a short hop, keep going, get out. The game will always force you into swimming out of this room, so don't worry about it. You want to double jump up here, double jump, jump, high jump, go into this room. As soon as you get up here, you want to do a roll, cancel it. I didn't cancel it. Come down here, beak bust the switch. So the best way to beak bust the switch is, is that their hitbox is like very lenient, so you can hit like the outer rim of it and be fine like I did right there. Or if you're not comfortable with that, you can always just hit the middle. It's a bit slower, but if you hit the outer end, it's always faster because you're traveling less distance. Get in Talon Trot, jump over here, jump on these platforms. Then we're going to go straight to Clankers. Uh, do not hit that switch. We are going to worry about that after Clankers. So, Clanker is a pretty special level. As soon as you're going to enter Clanker's Cavern, you're going to be on a global cycle for this level. Um, so, those of you who are aware, there's a fish called Gloop at the bottom of the level, and he is on a global cycle, so he's going to be swimming around down there. And we're going to be able to do 
the execution of the first part very quickly to make sure we get down there at the proper time. I will be teaching an easy way to do this. I will not be going into any intermediate ways to that cycle. So I don't believe that newer players should be attempting those. So that'll be that. So we're going to start right away. And this is going to go really fast since we do have to go fast to make these cycles. So I'll try to explain everything as well as I can. So as soon as you get in here, get in Talon Trot. Two short hops, long hop. Hold R, turn the camera, keep going. Get up here, double jump, go in Talon Trot, jump, red attack wrap, and Talon Trot again. You can just walk under the Chompas, but make sure you're never running towards the wall. If at any point you are running towards the wall, they will hit you no matter what. Or if you're jumping in front of them. So do not jump in front of them, and do not walk towards the wall. Grab the Jinjo here. Here, you want to wait a second? Turn around, then press B to start swimming. If you start swimming right away, you are going to start swimming the wrong way. So you want to wait a little bit before you start swimming. As soon as you come down here, start matching L after this note. Cancel the text, since you're already holding L and R. Or, R and B, because you're swimming. So. You should always be holding those down. Here you want to turn around, because if you keep holding down here, you're going to hit the anvil, so you turn around. Before you get too close, you want to turn back the other way so the camera's in the right position. Get the green Jinjo. Here you're going to be at 16 notes. Then you're going to do one swim up. Stop swimming. Get the bubble. Go down. Once you get the 18th note, stop. Turn around. Start towards this side of the key. Rotate around, sway it a little bit, then you want to start swimming downwards. Go through the key, and then you're closer to the next note. And then after this, after the 22nd note, uh, Gloop will be really close to us. We'll be able to snatch the last bubble and go back up. As, as long as you have four air bubbles, you can always make it up to the surface, no problem, from this route. Uh, but if you have three or less, as you start to go up, I would be worried. So you want to make sure you're at least four. After the 20 second note, one swim, stop. Sends a bubble, keep going. All right, so now we're gonna go to the tooth, which is the second cycle that's tied to this. Because Clanker keeps going up and down this entire time, and you want to hit the tooth at the right time. So we're gonna go towards this pipe. We're gonna go get the blue Jinjo. Get in here. So if you get to one air bubble before getting this Jinjo, you're most likely going to drown, unless it was very close. As you see here, we're down to one way further, which means we'll find we are not going to drown. Get up here, shoot three eggs really fast. The hitbox for this is really lenient, so it doesn't matter. Get in here, get this uh, Jiggy. So you made the cycle for that, it's all good. So as long as you don't make any mistakes at the beginning, you should easily make the cycle for the loop. It's pretty lenient. Um, and then over here, you just want to jump around, get all these notes, you'll be at 30, jump down, get pushed into swimming, get as much distance as you can, go to the right side, keep swimming. As soon as we jump on this box, we're going to double jump and start this little mini game. Do two double jumps, and then you're going to go in swimming after, you go through this ring. Go in swimming, hold down right away, go up. And here we're going to do a high jump and try to land on this ring and jump off of it like this. Enter swimming again, hold down right away again, surface, jump, red tat wrap, land on this box, double jump, get these rings, swim down, and get the last ring. Honestly, the rings mostly just take practice, and as long as you can copy the execution here, you should be fine. But it is finicky, and I honestly don't have that many setups or explanations for most of this stuff. It's just movement. Okay, before we keep going, uh, as soon as we come out again, we're going to be on another cycle. And that's going to be the bolt cycle. Uh, I will. So there's two ways to do the bolt cycle. There's the pole jump bolt cycle and the regular bolt cycle. I will be teaching the regular one. If you want to see how to do the pole jump one, you can look at the current world record, which will show you how it's done. But honestly, it is very difficult, and you have a very small window of opportunity to make it. So if you're new to the game, I wouldn't even worry about it. There's no reason to, since the, the odds of you making it are unbelievably small. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. But it is 8 seconds faster, since it is a cycle faster. But uh, as soon as we get out of here, we're going to grab two notes, get on the bolt, get a jiggy. And then we're going to explain everything, how it's supposed to go. Let's go. All right. Here you're going to jump, red right attack, wrap on top, get in talent trot. 
Get these two notes. Whoops. Don't worry if you miss one. It's not big of a deal. We can get them. Get these three. Jump over here. Get the jiggy. All basic stuff. Over here. Jump down. Roll down. Get in Talon Trot. Finish grabbing these notes. Jump over here. Get the Talon Trot. Kill this guy. Now we're gonna grab these four notes. Pretty basic so far. Jump down. So, I'm gonna go a bit slow here, so we're not gonna make any reasonable cycle. Just so I can explain a lot of the visual cues and all that. So as you're going up here, you'll see this dark block, right? And there's another tile above it. As soon as Banjo's nose hits the dark line here, you want to jump, double jump, right at tat wrap. Or well, jump right at tat wrap, you don't double jump. So you want to jump right at tat wrap and you should hit this grate. Whoops. Can be finicky sometimes. Like that. You're going to fall down. You want to get in Talon Trot here, get the Jinjo, jump out. Here I like to turn the camera around so it's facing this way. So I can just walk down, get all the notes. Here we're going to jump, cancel Talon Trot. And sometimes if you face uh, towards the grate, you can break it as you're canceling Talon Trot. I did it in there, but it's whatever. So here I will teach you how to do this. Usually you want to do this really quick, but I will teach you the consistent way to do it. So you want to run up, run up against the wall right here. Press Z, turn around, let go of Z. Press B and then high jump right away like this and hold up right after. You're going to jump down there, get the honeycomb and walk back. If, you're, if you get really good at this, you don't have to run up towards the wall and then turn around. But it makes it a lot more consistent if you're new and you're having issues with this. And again, you just press B, high jump. No problem. You get the honeycomb. After that, you want to get in Talon Trot. Jump over here. Keep going. Here, I like to zoom in the camera. It's really preference. There's really no specific reason why I do. Here, you don't want to jump off. You just want to walk off. Double jump. Go in Talon Trot. Jump up here. So there's two camera angles you can use for this. Uh, the camera angle I use is this one because I like to do short hops. You need to be able to maneuver very tightly around these corners. But if you're new, having an angle like this might be a bit better. It is going to be slower since you can't really maneuver super tightly around the corners. But it makes the jumps a lot easier like this. But if you have an angle like this, you can just like do a short hop, jump around really easy. But with this, it's a lot more consistent, just a bit slower. So if you're able to do, you know, an angle you're comfortable with, go for it. Mess around with it. See what you're comfortable with. That's the two methods, the two camera angles you can use for this. After this, we're going to get in Talon Trot, obviously. Well, you shouldn't have left Talon Trot, but we're going to jump down, and then we're going to rat a tat wrap on the clanker. Like this. And then if you made a good cycle, the bolt's going to be up, and you can just fall down right away. But obviously, we messed around. We explained some stuff, so the bolt's kind of out of whack. Here, just roll down. Hold down. Beak bust. Hit the switch. So here for these blades, I don't have a setup for them. I just keep an eye out whenever I see they're in front of me. I just dodge around them. So obviously they're going to be on a different cycle now, so I'm not going to be used to this. But if you pay attention, you can easily just dodge them even if you're not used to it. Uh, so you can clearly tell like the mark on the ground and where the blades are going, and they're pretty easy to dodge. Like You just walk around them, right? No problem. So you can mess around with that, walk around them, get comfortable with it. Personally, I don't have a setup for that. I just go through it. Jump here, extend roll here, fall down. Don't press anything. As you're falling down, don't move the joystick or anything. Press A. Hold R. Peek bomb. And then you want to rat a tat wrap at the end. Hit the loading zone. Here's the last move. We're going to be going Talon Trot here again. A quick Talon Trot that I talked about in Mumbos. Cancel the text. Here you're going to want to keep going to the side here after you grab the notes. And that'll make it so you don't get hit by the blades. Oh. They can be finicky sometimes. They can hit you regardless. They have a mine on their own. So got to deal with that. Get the gold feathers. Keep walking on this side. Shouldn't get hit. And after you're out, keep jumping. Here you're going to do a short hop. Cancel Talon Trot. Roll. Let go of the joystick. You will land on the jiggy perfectly. After that, you get in Talon Trot. Do a hop. Make your way outside of Clankers again. So as soon as we get out, there's going to be another cycle again. And this one's the tail, which isn't as bad. But if the tail is on a certain side... You might have to do a shorter jump towards the platform, so it's going to be slower. So as soon as we get out, we're going to go for the last four notes on the back of Clankers and the Jiggy that we unlocked at the beginning. So, And there you just swim down and get the Jinjo. It's pretty basic. There's nothing hard there. Again, jump right at tight wrap. Get up here. 
I like to hold R, center my camera towards the note, get it. Jump, cancel talent trot, get the note falling down. Oh, there's six notes on the back, sorry. Here, after a hop, I grab two notes each. Here for the tail, you can do short hops and keep going up, or you can just walk up it, if that's more comfortable for you. Because you probably won't fall down if you're just walking with the hops. you got to make sure that the tail is not moving too much or you're going to fall down too. So, And by cycle, this is what I mean. Like if you're on this side, you have to do a shorter jump or a longer jump to get to the platform. And if you're like over here, right? Here you're going to jump, run tight wrap, mash A, get the jiggy. Here we're going to get in town trot. And we're going to do another quick dive as we fall down to the next platform to go to the snippets. It's like this. And you enter swimming again. And snippets are a bit finicky. They can be pretty pretty annoying, but I'll show you how to do them. Here's another text box in the game where you can only you don't have to press L and R, you just press P to cancel it. Here you're gonna jump, wait for them to collide, peak boss on top of them. And talent trot, grab these notes, shoot two eggs, kill this snippet, shoot two eggs, kill that one. If you get hit by a snippet when that happens, you're never gonna make it to the jiggy. But if you're lucky and you don't get hit, you can easily make it. So and for this jump over here, you want to jump towards like the dark part of the pipe, like this little square. So jump over here, keep pressing up, and then you'll get on top here, no problem. And you keep going, cancel Tom Trot, get the jiggy. Uh, after this, we're going to start the big swim. A lot of people, or a lot of new players end up drowning here, and I'm going to teach a few ways to avoid that. So as soon as you start swimming, if you want to go as fast as possible, you're just going to start swimming as soon as you can. Because no matter how well you execute this last part, it's always going to take the same amount of time because you're on a timer. It ends when you drown. So you want to be swimming as soon as possible, so you drown as soon as possible. So you spend a, the least amount of time in the water. But if you're scared of drowning, what you can do is go in town trot, jump down the pipe, get pushed to the swimming, and then you get that little boost. Here you want to hug the left side of the pipe, turn left over here into this pipe, and when you get, when you get into this pipe, you want to hug the right side. So you'll be traveling the least amount of distance here, so you'll have the most amount of air for the end. So, you know, you have more time to get the, the honeycomb. So it's more comfortable for you. Get over here, get this, turn around, go back to the right side. You should be good. Keep going. You wanna hold up here. Keep going down. Keep swimming, grab all these notes. It's pretty easy. As long as you have two air bubbles, as soon as you hit 99 notes, you're fine. Uh, if you hit 99 or 98 notes with only one air bubble, I would be concerned. Just somewhere here, grab the honeycomb, no biggie. Uh, if you did the methods that I did, you'll wait a little bit longer. You'll have more time to mess around like you saw there. I waited, didn't even do anything. And uh, I still got the honeycomb, no problem. After that, you death warp, you want to walk out. In Talent Trot, as always. Jump here, cancel Talent Trot, peak bus, hit this switch. That'll bring the pipe up. Get Talent Trot again, go towards this pipe. After this jump, you want to cancel Talent Trot right away and high jump, like this. Here, be careful, this Chompa, again, if you're jumping while you're in front of him, you're going to get hit and you're going to fall off, which is pretty big time lost. And if you're hugging the wall, again, he is going to hit you. So you want to make sure that you're not hugging the wall and you don't jump in front of him. Jump to the next pipe, get the four feathers, hit this switch. Pretty basic stuff. Over here, we're going to get in town trot again. Do a long hop, get pushed swimming under this pipe. L and R as always, or L and R, R and B. So you keep swimming and you have the sharp angles over here. Double jump, get in town trot, grab three eggs, jump towards this platform. Go over here, mash Z, complete the puzzle. Now we're going to make our way to Bubble Gloop. Very fun level. Not really. I lied. I'm sorry. It's okay. There's just a lot of minigames. By a lot, I mean two. That's a lot for Banjo standards. So just keep swimming over here. Swim towards where the switch was earlier that we hit. Once you get close to it, you want to surface. And then double jump onto the platform. Like this. So here, as soon as you get out, you want to jump down left and jump on the side of this pipe and then jump towards the note door like this. Do another jump, cancel Tom Trot, you'll be right there. <laughs> Here you want to do a roll, double jump, and enter Talon Trot. Like this. Usually you would have obviously get a quick Talon Trot, but I didn't get it there. Keep jumping, 
Keep going towards public loop. Get in there. Now we're going to go open FP. We're going to take a lot of damage. But as soon as we get in the pipe, uh, we can use the slope abuse to take no damage. So we can jump on the side of the pipe and avoid the, the piranha fish. Like this, you just do a short hop, keep jumping on the side back to back. Don't jump on the same side twice because that will not reset your timer properly and you're going to slide down into the swamp, which is bad. Here, again, you match Z, complete the puzzle. Pretty basic. So before you enter Bubble Gloop, you want to make sure you have at least 4 health. Uh, if you're a new player and you know you'll end up taking a lot of damage, you can always hit the uh, Honeycomb Hive at the back. Go up to more than 4, but if you do everything correctly, like you see right here, I have 4 health. You could just go straight to Bubble Gloop. But here, there's a Beehive, so if you're below 4, or if you're not comfortable with Bubble Gloop, I highly recommend grabbing the health here and then making your way to Bubble Gloop. Uh, as soon as we get in the level, we're going to have to shoot a crocodile. Uh, so we're going to walk in, we're going to press C right once, hold up left, and as soon as we fall down the stump, we're going to hold up on the joystick, and then shoot one egg, and then keep going. Let's see what it looks like. So walk in. Wait. Turn the camera. Up left, up, shoot one egg, go on talent drop, keep jumping. Cancel this text. Make sure you're still holding Z as you're canceling this text, so after the cutscene's over, you don't got a talent drop. Like that. Keep going. Get these three notes. Get the Jinju. Get these. So for a lot of the parts on this level, you're going to be on the cycle for the Crocs. Some of them go pretty fast, so you don't lose a lot of time. Skip this note. And you want to jump. Jump to the pole. Get this token. Talon Trot. Jump. Right at that rep. Break this. Jump down. Jump. Right at that rep. Beak bust. Beak barge. Peak bust again, and get the jiggy, er, the jiggy, sorry. Here you want to go and talent shot again, jump, jump, get this note. Here after this we're going to be at one life, again if you're not comfortable with being at one life, whoops. Uh, you can always grab the extra health at the beginning of the level, and you'll be fine. Here we're going to jump on this leaf, because I don't trust myself. Cancel talent shot. It's because I missed that note, so don't worry too much about it. Usually you shouldn't make it that close. But again, if you're not comfortable with being at one life here, uh, you can always get the beehive before getting into bubble gloop. So here, we're going to be on a timer. We're going to have to hit the croc as well and get all the notes. So we're going to start this. Beak bust. Get in talent trot. Jump up here. Keep going. Here I like the old R. Then I like to turn the camera twice. Get all these notes. Turn it twice again. We didn't make the cycle, ever. For this, you want to go in Town Trot, jump, keep going, get all these notes, get this token, get these eggs, keep going. Here, stop jumping, grab these notes, keep going. Grab this Jinjo, do a hop here, do a hop line on the top of the hill there, and get the Jiggy. That easy. If you're not comfortable with jumping around, you can always walk to get the notes, which is a lot easier. But obviously jumping around the platforms is just the fastest way to do it. So here we're going to do a long jump, go to the flibbits, use gold feathers, and murder them. So the fastest way to kill the flibbits is to jump at the height of their jump, then kill them right away. And I'll show you the order we're killing them to make sure we get the jiggy during the cutscene. So jump over here, cancel text, gold feathers, jump, kill the two ones, kill this one, jump. Make sure you're jumping as they're jumping, so if you jump before they're jumping, you're not going to kill them at the right time. Land around this spot, and you should get the jiggy no problem. Here we're going to grab two health, <coughs> then we're going to do hut jumps. Which can be pretty intimidating at first, but they're not too bad. So look at these two notes. Jump up here, double jump. You want to stand at the top of this hut, on this side of it, so you want to be like slanted towards the next platform. You then you're going to do a long jump, and then cancel town trot, and land on the next platform, like this. Aim for this corner as well, it's a lot easier. If you're not comfortable doing these, you can always break the huts, use the jump pad, and keep going. We're going to apply the same strategy here. Be slanted on this side. Do a long jump, right tap wrap, go up here, jump, peak bust. Grab a few notes. Only got two. Go over here. Oops. Break this one. Get the jump pad. So the reason we get the jump pad there is because this 
HUD jump is extremely difficult and it's just not feasible for RTA. This is the last HUD jump. It's honestly the easiest one. You just jump up here, keep doing that. And you collect your reward, the Jiggy. Now we're coming up to a cutscene overlap. Uh, so what's going to happen is we're going to jump down here. You want to stand on this corner. And we're going to trigger the crocodile cutscene and then hit the witch switch. And both cutscenes are going to happen at the same time. So the timing for this, so obviously you want to aim for it. You can just hold Z, hold R, hold up, and adjust your angle as needed. This is like a fine angle. So the timing for this is right as he's about to close his mouth, you want to shoot an egg, then roll down, double jump, and then beak bust the witch switch. So let's see what it looks like. Shoot. Just like that. And then both cutscenes are going to happen at the same time. Get a talent trot, grab the rest of these notes, do a short hop, land on top of here, keep falling down, keep going. I would recommend not jumping off that hut right away because sometimes you'll take fall damage if you fall down. So it's just easier to just slide off and keep going. Jump around, get these notes. There's also going to be like the audio glitch where you hear like the little, little sprinkle noise or whatever. That's going to happen until we get the Jinjo. Once we get the Jinjo, that noise is going to go away. Keep going over here. We're going to get all these notes, we get the Jinjo, and uh, go for the next croc after that. There's not much here. Again, uh, as we do like a few other parts, we're going to jump before we hit the top so we don't hit the little animation. But we're still going to get the Jinjo like that. Jump. That is our wrap. Go over here. Here you're going to high jump and beak bust after you get the second note. So you're going to get the third note and land faster. Like this. Sometimes you can grab the third one too, but beak busting is still faster. Jump down here. If the buzz bomb's in a really bad spot, you can always just kill it. So here what we're going to do is we're going to hit this, and we're going to jump upright into the water. And as soon as we get out of the, uh, the cutscene, we're going to jump upright again and keep going. It's going to look like this. Because after a cutscene, you're invulnerable, so the swamp's not going to hit you. So keep the same angle, keep going, you'll be good. So if you don't take any extra damage throughout Bubble Gloop, your health management's going to end up perfectly. So here we should be at 5 health. And you don't want to be grabbing extra extra health since you're gonna. Well, I'm gonna explain it later. It's after the the maze. Here, grab the notes, hit those. Here, I like to jump. Rat a tat rap low to the ground. Whoops! I hit this guy. Hit this. You want to jump? Ah, oh, crap! Got an extra health. It's all good. But yeah. After you shoot that egg, you want to do a little short hop, jump towards the jiggy, grab it during the cutscene. Over here, you want to grab this egg. It's really important. It's not that important, but extra eggs are always good. Get this Jinjo, keep hitting it, go in Town Trot as you land on the feet, cancel the text, keep holding Z, whoops, messed up, and then just go in the mouth. Over here, we're going to go to the right side, grab these three notes. Here you want to make sure you're not too close to the tip top because you're going to trigger a text box and you don't want to do that. So you're going to jump towards the back, get this token, and as soon as you get this token, you're going to do a long jump down, bop into him. You're going to go next to him, and as soon as the text box goes away, you're going to jump into him again, like this. So as soon as you see the head of the text box disappear, that's when you want to jump. Then we're going to start doing turtles. These are all RNG, so you just got to remember the pattern and get it done with. The way I do this is I use numbers to memorize the turtles. So, like, that turtle is 5, that one's 3, that one's 6, that one's 2, that one's 5. So I'm going to explain how I number these. So this turtle is number 1. This turtle is number two. And this turtle is number three. It's kind of like an umpad. This one is number four. This one's number five. And this one's number six. So in the middle of a run, I pop into my chat and I use my numpad on my keyboard to write down the pattern so I can memorize it and I don't have to worry about forgetting about it. So my pattern was five, three, six, two, five. So we're going to start with five. Do three. Six. Two. And then five. You always want to be on turtle number five since it's the closest to all the other turtles. So no matter what your pattern is, you're always going to be closer to it. Obviously, you might get a turtle you could have been closer to if you knew in advance, but you're never really going to remember that, right? So always try to orientate yourself to be on this one. So let's say if I get number three last, then I'm going to try to do a short jump to get closer to this one. So I'm closer to every other turtle in the long run. So this pattern is three, one, four, two, four, three, two. So we'll do three, one. Oh, four. Whoops. Yeah, sometimes we'll get dead zones and the turtle just won't work, which is annoying. Four. Two. 
four. So finishing on two is the best possible outcome. And obviously when it comes down to the turtles, what you're looking for is having turtles that are really close to each other. So let's say you have five, three, two, then you go from five to three to two, which is really quick. If you can end on two on your last pattern for the third one, it's really good because you're closest to the jiggy, which we're gonna go grab right after. But if let's say your pattern is one, six, four, three, you have to travel from one to six to four to three. It's a lot longer and it's a lot slower. So you might want to sometimes look out for the slower patterns to have a good idea if you're losing time or not. So here we're going to hit the last hurdle. Try to do a short hop. Didn't get it. It's a really small window. The heaven puts going. We cancel the text. We're not going to get the jiggy right away. We're going to jump on top of the pedestal. And we're going to do a high jump. Move forward and then beak bust and grab the jiggy. After that, we're going to go in town trot. Finish grabbing the notes. And just walk out. So over here, what we're going to do is we're going to do a short hop and then cancel Talent Trot right away. And we're going to grab the Jiggy, just like this. So what's our health at? We're at five. So we want six health for the next section. So we need to grab one extra health. So there's two over here. I grabbed an extra one from a buzz bomb earlier by accident. But if you don't grab that and you don't take extra damage from the route that I'm teaching you, you normally grab these two and you'll be at six and you'll be fine. I'll explain why we want to be at six health. So there's a death warp at the end of this level. And you want one health for it. Uh, so over here, you just jump around, go fast, jump over the gaps. Don't worry about the buzz bomb over here. It's never going to hit you. Over here, make sure you turn the corners really quickly. So after you grab a note, you want to be going towards the next corner right away. Kind of like this. And it's a lot faster this way, which is important because we're not going to be grabbing the next pair of boots over here. So you want to avoid these. Keep going. As soon as the boots are about to run out, do a long jump, then get close to this note. Jump, double jump, whoops. Usually you'd want to double jump after you get the note, but it's all good if you don't. Here, always do long jumps, keep going. I'm do a short hop here, it's gonna be really close. You wanna be at three health after this section. Normally it's not this close, but I messed up one of the corners. So you wanna be at three health over here. Uh, if you're not at three health, if you're below that, that's a problem. But you need two health for the next maze section. Uh, if you're not comfortable with doing this strategy, you can always go to three health before the maze, grab the second pair of boots, and then just do the last part, which is really easy. You shouldn't have to worry too much about it. So we're going to go over here, turn the camera, set it up better. That's a good angle. So I'm going to hit the switch. You can always roll jump for this. I'll show you guys how to do it while roll jumping, but I do it in Talon Trot. So get in Talon Trot, do a long hop, long hop, short hop, grab the jiggy, just like that. Seven seconds is a really solid time. When I go back, I do the same thing. If you got really nice movement, you can also grab all the eggs while you're on the way, which is really good. But if you're not comfortable with that, you can always just roll jump. Just like that. And then just roll into the jiggy. It's no big deal. Uh, it does lose a bit of time, but it's a lot more comfortable. The movement's a lot easier to control. Talent Trot's a lot more tight, so you don't want to be doing that. So you can always do it like that, but I do it in Talent Trot because I'm comfortable with that. So after you get that jiggy, you jump back. Do the last part of the maze. Get these few notes. Long jumps. You're going to be at one life. Hit this note, go straight to Mumbo's. Be careful about that buzz bomb. Sometimes it could be in the way. Do two jumps here. You're going to two text boxes. Cancel both of those. So what I like to do for this pole, because we're going to jump straight to it, is I like to have Banjo facing towards the pole. Makes it a lot easier. You're going to turn around, have Banjo face towards the pole, jump, and then hold up a little bit. And you're going to land on this right away. After that, you do another short hop up there. Then jump forward, get this honeycomb, get this token, and get the transformation. You can sometimes, if you're unlucky, get a washing machine or a T-Rex cutscene, which will lose a bit of time. You're going to get transformed twice. Or here you get another text box. You just cancel it, and then you just start matching B, walking out, because chomping as the crocodile is faster. So anytime you're moving, you want to be chomping, except when you're doing vial, obviously. But we'll go into that when you get there. We're almost there. Here you want to jump. Land on this part. You don't want to land behind this wall. It's a lot slower. So you want to land on this little pathway. Keep matching B. Keep going. Walk in here, and we're start Vial. So we're going to get these three notes, and we're going to talk to Vial. Do not cancel this text box, as it will default to saying no, you don't want to play the mini game. So just hold A, make the text box go by faster. And then after he's like, oh, press A or B, press A really quick and cancel text, like this. And keep mashing B, you want to go back, grab this Momo token, grab these three notes, keep mashing B. Walk all the way around. And the reason I like to do it this way is because by the time you grab the shoes, 
the timer is going to line up perfectly for you to be able to use the shoes at the end of the last round to walk out and still have them. So after that, you want to grab the shoes here, and then you want to start eating some Yumblies. So the best way to win against Vile is to always be ahead of him and steal the ones he's about to grab, just like that. You want to be ahead, steal as many as you can. You don't have to do this. The first round is pretty lenient, but if you're ever far behind and you want to make sure you do end up winning, that's one of the best ways to do it. Simply because he's going to be a lot slower at the time, and if you're just further ahead and you're getting one and he's not getting one, it's going to make a huge difference in the long run. Over here, we're just going to keep eating them, keep trying to take from him best we can. His AI is always going to try to go for the closest one, so you can always use that as like a guideline to get ahead. So like that, we're about six ahead, seven ahead. We have a few seconds left, so you can just grab these supplies before the end. If you have, let's say there's like eight seconds left of the timer, and you have like a five to eight Yumbly advantage, you can like realistically go grab these supplies and never lose. He's never going to get more than like a Yumbly per second, right? So as long as you have a decent window, you'll be fine. So once the second round begins, after a few seconds, the shoes are going to run out. So try to make your pathing so you grab as many as you can and you end up having one at the end that you can always grab. It doesn't always work out. It's obviously RNG if you have one on your way or not, but always try to make sure that you optimize that as best as you can. But all of this is basically RNG. There's not much you can do about it. So here, Vile's ahead of us. So he's going really slow because he does rubber band, which is why we can get away with uh, getting the supplies at the beginning. So we can just follow him, see where he's going, catch back up. And as you can see now, we're like, we have a comfortable lead, right? So always try to keep an eye out for where Vile is. Try to steal like that from him. It's pretty easy. And it'll make sure you end up winning against him every time. So if you're falling behind, I would just prioritize trying to see where Vile is and trying to deny him getting any Yumblies. See how like we were behind him a few seconds ago and we had like a 10 Yumbly lead on him now? Like that's pretty huge. For this last round, every 10 seconds, the Yumblies are going to rotate between the red ones and the yellow ones. So you want to work with that accordingly because Vile does not adjust for that. See how he's still going for red ones? But you know the yellow ones are going to be the next target. So you can just wait next to them and not waste your time trying to go for another one. Here we'll use the running shoes. We'll go grab him again. No big deal. Go for the red ones now. I would say that this round is one of the easier ones simply because you have that edge on him where the other rounds you don't, where you know the rotation is going to change. So you can get a huge lead on him just by knowing when to stop and when not to stop. So just like that, it's going to change again. Go for the red ones. See how we just get those three, no problem. But Vile could have gotten those if he knew, but he doesn't. Which gives us a huge advantage here. Go for the yellow ones. If ever you're extremely close and you're one-off of winning against him, what you can do is pause buffer. It's like if you pause, the timer is going to go slower because it has to respawn, but you can still move. So you can still grab other Yumblies. So, see how the music stops or whatever, but you get the idea. Here we're going to grab this Jiggy, cancel this text box, and just walk out. So if you're ever extremely close, you can always try to pause buffer to make sure you get that win if you're extremely close. Hopefully, if your RNG isn't too bad, it doesn't come down to that. That's one way to do it. Also, I should mention that if you miss the Flibus Jiggy, uh, don't grab it right away. Just leave it. And as you're leaving the level, grab it as a crocodile. Just walk over here, grab it, and then keep going. It's the easiest way to do that. Also, if you're not comfortable with Vile, you can always go into Vile with 3 health because he does 2 health damage when you lose. And then you can lose one round to him comfortably and keep going if you're not very good at him to start off. That's something I should have mentioned, but that's something to keep in mind. Here, we're just going to grab this. So, Jinjo Jiggies, before you grab them, there's always like a little delay. So, if you grab them, you're going to be stuck for a few seconds and you can't move, and then the cutscene will start. So, instead of wasting that time, we just go over here, grab the last two notes, and then just keep going and then grab it and just keep moving. Over here, we're going to grab the last five notes, and then look for the buzz bomb. Where is he? Over here. Jump in the air, he's going to notice you, and then just get hit. If you jump in the air, he's always going to notice you faster since you're closer to him. That's why you want to do that. Do a little hop and get out. And that's Bubble Loop. We'll keep going. Walk over here. Keep mashing B because it is faster. Mumbo's going to talk right here. Cancel that. He's going to talk again a little bit. Hop. There you go. Cancel that. If you're lucky, the uh, Grublin over there is not going to notice you. If he does, he's just going to like run into you and hit you no matter what. But you didn't over there, so we're good. So we're going to keep jumping. Just jump over here. Now we're going to get the Bubble Gloop Layer Jiggy. So jump over here. Do a long hop. 
So we're going to use this jump pad to get on top of the statue. So after you use the jump pad, you want to land around this part, and then hold up left, and then you should land on the statue, no problem. So land for this part, up left, double jump, and you'll land on the hand, no problem. You want to roll, double jump, roll again, jump down here, and you're fine. And that's how you do that. It's pretty basic. Go to Talent Trot. Keep going. Go over here. Do a long jump. Double jump. Roll. Double jump. Go over here. Pretty basic stuff. Just basic movement. Go over here. Get a quick Talent Trot. Now we're going to go over here. Jump. Break this open. There's going to be an inv invisible platform here that you can just get a little boost off of. Like that. Keep going, avoid this guy, hit this switch, and go for this feather. Try to jump like that. Do a little short hop towards the next feather. Grab this one, grab this one. And be careful here, you can always get stuck on this corner like this. Whoops. Kill this guy. Yeah, when you're jumping from the third feather, you can get stuck on this corner. So make sure you're always jumping a bit towards the side so you walk around it. Keep going here. We're going to go to the stairs. Jump on the first part. Skip a step. Keep going. As soon as we go through here, we're going to do a short hop, cancel Talon Trot, shoot three eggs, break that open, that will come in handy later, and just keep going. We're going to go open Gobies, and we will make our way to Gobies Valley. Whoops. Normally you'd want to get a quick Talon Trot there. I missed that. It's no big deal. Keep going. Go to the Jiggy. Manage the Z. Get that bad boy done. So we can head to the next level. Alright. Go back in Talon Trot. Now we're going to go to Gobies. Pretty basic stuff. As you come out of this room, be careful. The camera will be facing towards you, and you can easily get hit by one of the Garblins. So I always try to jump to the side here, so if he is close to me, I can easily dodge him. There he wasn't in the way. But sometimes you can get unlucky, and he is going to be in your way. You want to try to avoid that as much as possible. Keep going here. Keep jumping. Do a long jump here. Short hop. Long jump. And then we're in gobies. So as you start off, you want to go in Talon Trot. Just do a jump straight back. Get this Jinjo. Jump forward. Here I like to keep the camera middle spaced out. Not zoomed in or anything. Just the basic level. So you just don't mess with it. Get the running shoes. Grab these notes, and after you're done grabbing these notes, I zoom out the camera. Here we're gonna grab two notes, and then as soon as you don't see the statue anymore, you're gonna jump back, like this, and grab it. If you get good RNG, you can get a statue that'll spawn right up here in the up left corner, and you can just jump straight to it with the running shoes, right tat wrap, and get it. Fortunately, we did not get that RNG, but that's something to point out. So if the running shoes aren't running out, you can jump over here, jump, get the momentum, and keep going. Before we keep going, I'm going to be teaching two routes for Gobi's Valley. One that uses Gobi Clip, and one that doesn't use Gobi Clip. The main difference is going to be with this, the no Gobi Clip route, we're going to get an extra Momo token, and I'll show you guys what token you want to get extra later in the run if you're going to do Gobi Clip. If you're a new runner, I highly suggest not going for it, as it only saves 15 seconds on first try, and it's a very inconsistent trick, and you can easily lose your run to it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to jump down, get these boots, Get these notes. Also going to teach my setup for Gobi Clip. So, after we get this token, we're going to turn the camera, center it, so the line of the wall is straight. And after we get the last note, we're going to go straight left, turn the camera when you don't see the wall. Turn the camera again when you see one of the squares on the wall. The big square that I'm going to jump next to. This one right here. So after you see that one, turn the camera again. Line up. Peak bust against this line. And boom, that's Gobi Clip. You get through there, and then you would walk into Sphinxy and go through the leveling zone. So, obviously, you want to turn the camera there, go in Talon Trot, keep jumping, and you can enter the loading zone from the other side. I'm going to walk out here and explain the route without Gobi Clip, since I think that's the better route to do, honestly. Jump up here, get pushed up against the wall. Uh, if you jump, do a long jump towards this line on the wall, you're going to get pushed up right away, like this. Make sure you don't press A when you're over the flight pad, because you will start flying. Keep jumping over here. Here's the extra mobile token I'm talking about. Jump, peak bust, roll, jump. You want to stand on this corner. Line up Banjo's left arm with the side of the nose. Shoot an egg. I'll hit that side of the nose. Turn quickly. 
And as soon as you, the cutscene starts, you want to roll. Well, as soon as you hit this egg, you want to roll. So shoot an egg. Roll. You're going to fall down. Again, after a cutscene, you're invulnerable for a few seconds. So the grabba or slappa will not hit you. So go in Talent Trot. Keep going. And walk in this loading zone. We're going to do a short hop here. Cancel Talent Trot. Walk a bit forward. And then high jump. So you keep your momentum. As soon as you grab this note, aim right. Shoot an egg. Should hit the statue. Turn the camera around. Zoom out the camera. Grab this Jinjo. Here you want to turn the camera like this. Hold left. Shoot an egg. And hit this guy. Shoot three eggs here. You're going to hit that. Grab this note. Keep going. Jump up here. Get this jiggy. So to line up the shot for the three eggs up against the wall to hit the statue early, what you want to aim for is the side. Oh, it's kind of hard to see. Now we'll just jump down. So... We'll jump down to the next carpet, actually. Be easier to explain. So we'll redo this. Shoot an egg. Turn the camera. Then aim for the right side of, like, the black spot on the wall. And you'll hit the statue. Like, the spot that was, like, right there. Like, uh, under the sphinxy. Aim for the right side of that little dark spot, and then shoot three eggs. After you get this jiggy, roll down. Double jump. Grab this note. He's going to despawn. Get this note. Keep going forward. Grab this token, jump forward, and he's not going to hit you. Keep going. Jump up here. Get this note. Get this note. And as soon as we walk out, I should explain this, but the way the rings work in the level is as soon as the camera sees the ring, it's going to spawn. But we want to jump on top of the ring before it spawns, and then it's going to spawn, and we're going to be on top of it so we can go through it right away. So we're going to jump out, and then I'm going to explain everything as I go through it. So you want to walk forward, turn the camera, zoom out, get this note, zoom the camera in, here you're going to do a long hop, a short hop, and then as soon as you see the statue start to pop up, you're going to do another long hop. So short hop here. Oh, oh, it spawned early. I'll do it again. I just explained it, but it spawned early because I messed around, <coughs> and the camera kind of turned there. So we're going to jump back out. Go over here. Turn the camera. Get the note. Zoom out. Do that. Short hop. Long hop. And you're going to land on top of the statue. Go through it. Jump. Keep going. That was also the statue I was talking about with the running shoes. Uh, another statue I should mention is if you get a statue that spawns in between the cactus, after you get the second hex shot off of the nose, you can just hold right and just do a jump, and you're going to land on top of that ring and get it, and you can go straight to Sphinxy. You can also get another good ring RNG. Uh, if the ring spawns over here, and all you got to do is jump on this side of the wall, jump, red attack, wrap, and you can land on top of the ring that's right here. So those are the three spots for the good rings. But if you get that, you want to skip these two notes. You can get them at the end of the level. Uh, right before the end. I'll explain that later. But since we didn't get good RNG, I'm just going to go over here. Jump. Get these two notes. And we're going to get the statue. Jump down. Until Talon Trot. Shoot three eggs. Go on Talon Trot. Keep going. Alright, so we're counting up the puzzle pyramid. Which I'll explain the order for it. And the way I do to remember it. Jump over here. Keep going. Get the green ginger. Whoops. Do short hop, long hop. Do the town trot. Do this. Go on town trot. Get these feathers. Keep going. I'm gonna grab these two notes. Whoops. Did not mean to do that. Roll down. Whoops. Missed a note. It's the bad camera angle. What happens? You just easily get it. Jump down. Jump. High jump. Extend your roll. So as soon as we hit the first switch, uh, there's a timing that's going to start. We're going to kill this guy right away. Normally you'd want to kill him later, but he's going to be in the way for this. So you want to grab this health. So this is going to be the blue egg, and the other one is in the left corner. So we're going to hit this. That's the blue egg. Go hit this one. Hit this switch. And these are set up like a chess piece where like how knights move. So it's going to be three up. So like this. It's going to be right here. That's the next one. Then the Jinjos. They're right next to each other. And then again, this one's going to be like a knight position. The Banjo one. I'm going to grab this token. It's going to end up right here. Hit the note. It's right up here. Kazooie. Across from each other. Then Mumbo. Top left corner. And these two are right next to each other. The red feather. You want to land in the middle to get the jiggy. So that's how that's going to look. You grab it, go on Talon Trot, leave. So as we get out here, we're going to jump on top of the little, I guess, entrance, land on here, do a long hop, grab this note, do a short hop, 
Get down here. Keep getting these notes. And we're gonna go for the next statue. Shoot three eggs. Oh, whoops. Sometimes eggs won't register even if they go in, like that one. I missed one, but one of them also, whoops. Also one of them didn't register. And as soon as the la last egg goes in, you can do a short hop and fall down. And you don't have to uh, wait for the cutscene to go over for you to fall down. But you, it's a pretty precise timing. You gotta make sure you jump as soon as the egg hits. So Here I like to wait three flaps. Use two feathers. Hold up. Then beak bomb. You should go through the ring no problem. After this one, wait three flaps. Use one feather. Wait for the camera to recenter. Beak bomb. Okay, we're gonna pause here. So for grab, so a lot of the hitboxes in the game, they have a period of time when they spawn where you cannot grab them. Grab is one of them. So as soon as he spawns, you're going to wait like a second or two before you beak bomb. If you beak bomb too early, you're going to crash into him and you're not going to pick up the jiggy. Um, and where he spawns is like in the middle of the area. Um, you'll see it. But uh, yeah, we're going to wait a little bit. And usually the easy way to tell with Grabba is after the lag spike is over, that's when it's a safe time to beak bomb. So just fly down. Grab is going to spawn right here. Wait a little bit. Beak bomb. Just like that. You should get the jiggy no problem. After that, you want to use five feathers. Wait for the camera to recenter. Beak bomb, and you'll hit the switch. Oh, we got really good RNG. Well, not RNG, but we got a really good shot. So I was able to hit the, the switch and just beak bust out and land right in front of the door, which doesn't happen very often. But before we go in here, uh, I'll pause. So you want to enter this room in Talent Trot. As soon as you enter, you're going to do a long hop. And then you're going to shoot three eggs down and three eggs holding down right. Or down left. So I'll show you what it looks like. You don't have to shoot three on the two go around because you only need five eggs for this. You can just shoot two like that and it's going to work. But three is a lot safer. Here you just want to sit in the middle. Hold down. High jump. I'll grab the jiggy. Uh, the timing for the high jump is you want to be lined up with this line on the wall. Like that weird pattern on the wall. After you see Banjo come across it, you can just high jump and it'll be fine. Here you can just roll down. Grab these two notes. Grab these two notes. You want to land on this platform, do a short hop, get the next one. After you get the token, do the same thing here. Land on the platform, do a short hop, get these two. Walk out. Here we're going to be doing another ring. So we're going to want to zoom out of the camera. Walk down, and you want to walk in parallel with this line. So keep walking. And you'll just make it a statue, no problem. Here we're going to go for the next Sphinxy. Jump over here, cancel it, shoot three eggs, and jump down like usual. Like this. When we start flying, we're going to use three feathers and then meat bomb towards the cactus. Alright. Go up. One, two, three. We have the camera to recenter. Beak bomb. Turn around. And just grab the honeycomb. Here, you want to align yourself. Let the stick go neutral, then beak bomb. You'll always hit it. If you're not neutral on the stick, sometimes you'll crash land on the on the rock. If you're lucky, the animation will start before uh, the cutscene's over. Or sometimes you'll hit the rock and you won't even grab the jiggy, so you can grab it while you're flying to skip it. But there, I got unlucky and just didn't start. So Here, jump in the quicksand, take a damage. Jump on the top of this wall, keep going, get a little boost. Get this note. Running shoes, get the note. Here, you're going to hit the switch, do a short hop, keep going. Uh, if you're low on supplies, like I think I'm a bit low on eggs, uh, you can always grab a few extra supplies going up here. So you want to grab this note. You can grab this egg if you need it. Oh, I missed it. There's also feathers and stuff. If you're comfortable and you think you have enough, you don't need to grab them. You just really need to grab the notes. Yeah, so like I'm at 12 eggs. So I'm going to make sure to grab the rest of the eggs here. Jump on the corner here. Grab this egg. Jump down. I'm going to hold down left here. Go neutral. I'll grab this token. Start swimming. And we're just going to aim for the Jiggy. Don't worry about where you end your positioning. It's going to be reset every time so you don't get hit by the mummies no matter what happens. You're going to be in the middle of the nose or whatever. <coughs> so it's not a big of a deal. Here I'm going to make sure to grab a few extra eggs. I'm doing fine on feathers, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I've been using a lot of extra eggs. So I'll make sure to grab the extra supplies. Anywhere between like 15 and 20 eggs after gobies is fine. So I'm going to be at 16 here, which is perfectly fine. I'm also going to show a backup strat to grab more eggs and feathers if uh, you use too many and you absolutely need them. It is very slow, but no big deal. As soon as you hit 66 notes here, you want to go up here on this platform. Go parallel with this line again. 
and then just get on the last statue. As soon as you go through this one, you want to cancel text right away, and then walk forward. Just like this, then hop. After that, we're going to go to the maze pyramid. So we're going to do like we did earlier, grab the notes here. Walk right in. So this maze pyramid is very difficult. The maze is very complicated, and it's uh, honestly not easy to remember. So what you're going to want to do here is jump on the side of the wall. Then you're going to jump towards the wall, land on it, and then say screw it. And you're just going to jump over the, uh, the pyramid, or just the maze. Forget everything else, don't jump over it. And there you go. It's that easy. Over here, cancel Talon Trot. Jump into the jiggy. It's all good. Keep going. Jump into the spot. Grab the token. Here there's going to be two gold feathers and a Jinjo. Definitely want that. As you walk out, let the stick go neutral. Press A and hold up, and you're going to go straight up the pyramid. So here you can do a very good quick dive and take one damage if you need it. Or you can do a smaller quick dive and don't take damage. So if you hit the bottom of this part, you're going to take damage. If you don't, you're not going to. So depending on the amount of health you have here, it's up to you. The optimal amount of health to have by the end of Gobies is three. And we have three right now. So we definitely don't want to take extra damage. So we're going to do a shorter quick dive. Just like that. And keep going. So the, the way to do a shorter quick dive is you just slide longer before you let go of Z. If you slide less, you're going to do a longer quick dive. So if I did a short slide there, I would have taken damage. If let's say I was at four health or something, I'd most likely want to do that. So here we're going to get the Jinju. We'll get this last note. Turn around. Get the Jiggy. Go up. Again, like I explained earlier, the Jinjo Jiggies, they have this little delay on them, so you can't grab them right away. You can, but you're not going to be able to move for a few seconds. And the best way to avoid that is to use your time to do something else, and that's what we do there. We'll grab that extra note. Jump over here, cancel Talon Trot, hit Gobi. Cancel the text, give water to the tree. It's going to go up. We're almost done with Gobies now. So here we're going to grab the running shoes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a short hop left, then jump upwards, jump on the tree right here, and then jump the trunker right away. It's going to look like this. And as soon as you land here, you want to let your stick go neutral, then just do a jump. Don't let it go neutral for too long, though. Just, like, reset it. And get these three notes. Go over here. Here, let your stick go neutral. Then you can jump right away instead of having to wait with the running shoes. Wait two flaps. Mash B. And you fall down here, get the notes, hit Gobi. Get this note, get this honeycomb, then we're going to jump on the side of this wall, and then jump towards the slope over there, just like that. Again, if you need to take extra damage, you can always land in the quicksand and go up this hill. Uh, but yeah, obviously you want to be at 3 health here, so we're going to start grabbing the notes. Before you take your last damage, we're going to go in gold feathers. I'm going to explain why that's faster in a minute. Right here, go into gold feathers, grab this one, this one, and this one. Because of the way the invincibility frames work for this part, uh, if you don't use the gold feathers there and you take the extra damage, if you have four health, it's going to take longer for you to die because you have to wait a little bit. It'll be a little bit of a delay. But if you use gold feathers there, as soon as you let go, you're going to die right away. Uh, if for whatever reason you're low on gold feathers, you can always just have four health and lose that little bit of time. But optimally, you want to use gold feathers and finish that like that. After that, you go in town trot and walk out. Here we're going to do a short hop, long hop, short hop, long hop, and you're going to land on this platform. Keep going, and then we're going to use this jump pad to go get the layer jiggy. So use it, fall back on it, jump over here, and just roll into the corner, and you'll get the jiggy no problem. And that's why we avoided the witch switch, because we just don't need it for that. Go over here, keep going. Obviously you want to also grab that moment token. Now we're going to go open Mad Monster. This is a pretty big detour to go up on a level, but unfortunately, there's no good other way to go around that. So You just got to walk around. Here you want to roll. Hold right. Roll. Keep holding right. Start swimming. And go. Hug the left side of the wall here. Go through right away. Turn a little bit to the left. And aim for the next part here. Again, hugging the left side of the wall for these tunnels is faster. So, As soon as we get through here, we're going to want to hug the right side of the wall. Less distance to travel. 
So you just swim faster through this part. Keep going. Keep going. And you're going to get up, up here. It's going to be a really scary fish. You can just swim under him and then go up. He shouldn't hit you. Unless he notices you really early. That should be good. Go up here. What I like to do here is do a short hop. Then jump. Short hop. Jump. Short hop. Jump. And you get across all these no problem. Match Z. Get the puzzle completed. After this puzzle, we're going to do another detour. Grab a Mo token. And then quick dive to the bottom back to where the tunnel was. And leave the area. Here's what it's going to look like. Two short hops. Long hop. Get this token. Do a quick dive. You're back where you started. Now you want to hug the left side since you're on the way back. It's not the right side anymore. Just hug this. Make sure you're not swimming into the wall though because that is slower. But you don't want to be closer to it. We're walking out. No, swimming out. A little difference. Keep going. Or you want to be on the right side of the tunnel. <laughs> Keep going. Turn over here. Going up. Double jump, go town trot, walk out. So here we're gonna hold down right to two hops, a long hop, mash right attack wrap, land. So here, where's this guy? Is he following me? Yeah. So here, you honestly don't want to shoot from this angle, because sometimes the eggs aren't going to register. So what I like to do is when I ride a tat wrap, I like to do a short hop in front of it. Shoot three eggs while I'm in front, and they're all gonna register. Activate this cauldron. It's gonna be useful later. And then just keep going. Making our way to Mad Monster Mansion. Just keep jumping, keep jumping. Uh, so this part of the platform, like you can't fall off on this side, so it's pretty easy. If you just stay closer to that side, uh, you literally can't fall off. Obviously, you want to be closer to this part of the edge because it's just faster, less travel time. But this part, you can fall on either side, so you got to be careful. I just like to have the camera behind me. It's a lot easier. You can either old R, just switch it with the C buttons, whatever you're comfortable with. Up here, go up left. How many eggs do we have? 14? Yeah, that's fine. So we're going to shoot two eggs at this gate, and make sure you shoot two, because it does require two to break. So we're going to come to the top of the hill, shoot two eggs, and you're going to hear that, like, clang noise, so you'll know if the gate's broken or not. And then you want to make your way to Mad Monster. Just like that. As soon as you enter the level, you're going to go in Talent Trot and collect these two notes. Jump back, collect these two. After that, we're going to jump on the balcony and then jump towards the pipe. This has to be done quickly, otherwise the bat will hit you. It's going to look like this. Go and tell try again. Go up here. Poop an egg. Roll down. Beak bust. Quick talent trot in here. Do a short hop. Cancel talent trot. Okay, we're going to kill this guy. Uh, so after you get to around this part, in front of the barrel, you want to hold down left, or down right, sorry. Shoot an egg. Just like that. After that, use gold feather, get this Momo token, and get this jiggy. Go over here, roll, high jump, grab these notes. And the reason we shot that egg is to open the barrel with the Jinjo in it. We can just grab it, and walk out. Over here, we're going to do a few short hops, and then we're going to high jump onto the pipe. Just like that. Keep going. Grab this note. Break this window open. I like to kill the bat here, so it's not in the way. Go over here, jump around, get this note, roll, rat a tat rat, open the window. As soon as you fall in this room, up left, kill this guy. Grab the Jinjo. Grab the four notes, grab the token, and walk out. So when you walk out of these windows, you want to let your stick be neutral, and you want to wait till you fall down here and you don't move right away. After you fall down on the platform, after walking down the loading zone, you can jump. You're going to jump this way. Whoops. Should have jumped that way without falling down. No biggie. Just get back up. So you're up here. Jump three times. Wait. Get the note. Open this window. As soon as you get in this room, you want to get in Talon Trot. Get these notes, walk under this guy. Here, be careful, because you can get hit 
by that little fire there. So you want to walk around it. Whoops. As I say that. So you want to walk around it like that and get these three notes. Whoops. And then you want to do it. Hello? A little short hop. Walk out. But yeah, that was a good example of how to get hit by the fire and how not to get hit by the fire. Get the last note, get the Jinjo, and if you're really fast, you'll get the weed skip. The weed delay. We'll, we'll hear it again later. We're here, quickly grab the token. You'll be invincible. You won't get hit. Get these two notes. Get these three notes and make sure you don't fall down because it will wake up Napper. Do two short hops, jump on the Jiggy. You'll be off the flight pad, which is perfect. And you can go in Town Trot right away. Just jump. Finish grabbing these notes. Cancel Talent Trot before you get close to the door. Poop an egg. Now walk out. The reason you want to cancel Talent Trot sooner is so you don't actually break the door open. Go over here. Make your way to the maze. So the thing about these ghosts is you can always walk under them. So even if they're in your way, as long as you stop jumping and you just walk under them, you'll be fine and you won't get hit. Oops. Unless they follow you like that. You have to keep moving. Usually they shouldn't be in your way though. I just got unlucky there. So we're going to be doing the hedge jump over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump on top of this honey hive. And once it hits the top of its height when it's jumping, as you can see, it keeps going up and down. Once it sets at the top of it, we're going to jump on top of this part of the edge. It's going to look like this. Like that. So the good timing for it is just to wait while you see it's going up right there. You see it's at the top of its height. You want to jump at that point and then you'll make it no problem. After this, we're going to jump onto the other... What the hell? That's never happened before. Okay, I'm sorry. I need to wait for him to move. Hello? Come on. Come on, little buddy. Leave me alone. Okay. So after that, we're going to jump on the other top part. And do three short hops with Banjo. Jump down, poop an egg in here, and keep going. You shouldn't get hit by this guy. Shoot another egg, kill this guy, grab the health. Uh, so here, you can go to this corner and it will de-aggro him. And you just poop the egg, no problem, get it. I'm actually going to kill him because I do want the extra health. Because I'm kind of low. Up over here, whoops. Uh, usually you want to go neutral after you cancel Talent Trap before these so you don't get stuck like that with the Rattatat Rat. I just forgot to do it there. Get into the corner. Do that. Hit it. Cancel. High jump up here. Do a short hop here. Go in Talent Trap. And then here you're going to want to turn the camera towards Mumbo's Hut because it's going to reduce lag. So you're going to jump here. Turn the camera. Jump down here. Get these three notes. Break the gate open. Keep going over here, get this token, jump around this guy. Same as the door earlier, cancel taunt shot early, poop an egg, go in. Do three short hops, or well two, and then you want to jump on top of here. Get the B. Tumblr can be pretty difficult sometimes, the timing is the timing window is pretty small, so we're going to get these two, we're going to get hit there. Barely cut it next to him. Get these two, we're going to jump down, get this note, and go back up, so we don't get hit. Keep going. Whoops. As we got hit there, we lost a bit of time, so we're going to wait for the cycle to reset. So it's going to go past us. Just like that. Cycle is always the same speed, so once you learn how long it takes for him to go around, it shouldn't be too bad. We're going to grab that note, cancel the text, make sure you cancel it, that's when the jiggy spawns, and then just roll into the jiggy. Get this note, it should be a 49. And then keep going. Jump around the house, be careful here. If you don't see these guys, a lot of the time they'll be behind the house and when you're turning the corner here, you'll get hit by them. But if you can see both of them and where they are, you shouldn't be worried about it. Get the token here, get the three notes, keep going. This guy should never be in your way. Open the gate, the town truck. Alright, so before we get this Jinjo, that's going to trigger the Jiggy. So like I said earlier, well I've said multiple times, uh, objects in this game when they spawn, there's a little frame window where you can't pick them up. This is true for this Jiggy. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait for the Jiggy 
to do its third bounce. It's going to bounce one, two, three. And after it bounces for the third time, we're going to be in the top left corner of the platform. And we're going to jump, like, past it and into the water. This is what it's going to look like. We'll be at the top left. The third bounce. Whoa. I messed it up. Whatever. After the third bounce, you want to jump. Then you land in the water. And then you do the double jump like in Mumbo's and you'll be fine. But you want to be standing about this part of the platform if you're going to be doing it. And then you just bounce off. When you get here, you double jump. You can just skip it, no problem. But it is a tight window. So don't be too upset if you miss it. Like there. So it's not that big of a deal. It's only like four seconds. So. Get the running shoes. Make sure you get the running shoes there. I would highly recommend not doing any jumps until you grab them, because if you miss them, you have to wait to hit the switch again, because you're never going to make it to the door in time. I just run to the uh, the church, keep going. Here we're going to jump on top, kill the ghost. Get this health. So on these corners here, if you get stuck on them and you just keep going in the same angle, you can just get pushed up to the top, just like that. You can grab the note. Keep going. High jump. Do the same thing over here. Pushed up. Try to grab the eggs if you can. They're always useful. You're getting kind of low at this point in the run. So. So here what we're going to do is we're going to roll jump up there, trigger a text box, skip it in midair, and hit the first note of the piano. Like this. This pattern is always set, so you just gotta memorize it. Unfortunately, there's... Like, the way I did it was just do it over and over again until I just remember it. After this, nope. Cancel text. Keep going. Keep going through the song. It's pretty basic once you know it. It's not very difficult to remember. But yeah, making sure you skip the text before hitting the first switch is pretty important since you can't start the next switch until the text is skipped, so... After the last note right here, you want to walk up a little bit, go in Town Trot, cancel the text. Make sure you let go of R first, not L, because if you let go of R last, the camera is going to turn around and spin. You're going to have a bad camera angle. Here, make sure you keep Z pressed down, high jump twice, roll, jump, whoops. Jump up here, go in Town Trot, get all the goodies, miss that jiggy. Jump down here, go in Flight. Then you're just going to grab the jiggy in midair. Just like that. Use five feathers, go up here, hit the witch switch. <coughs> Almost done with the church. Turn the camera around, go over here, get this token. Sometimes you have to jump around this guy, he could be in the way. You don't worry too much about him though. Here you're gonna wanna roll down, double jump. Oh fuck. What? Please. Okay, sorry about that death, but we're back. So there's two ways you can do this. You can beak bust down with the recoil damage cancel. So you would recoil and fall down like that, or you can roll jump down like this. Double jump. Do that. Get the snow. Juke this guy. Or don't, don't juke him. That works too. Alright. That's how that should be done. Now you walk out of the church, get the last pot. Poop an egg. Go up here. Walk around, get the token. So here we're going to walk towards the left corner. Jump on top, long hop, long hop. And jump up here. You want to be facing towards the W here. Then before you hit the top, as usual, we don't want to have the top of the pole, so we're just going to jump and beak bust. Like this. Whoops. Like this. There we go. Grab the jiggy. And the reason you want to be towards the W is because you'll fall down closer to the last note. Like this. You'll be closer. Whenever you're jumping off here, do not jump from standing on, like, the corner. You want to jump from standing inside. Like this. Do a long hop. Grab the note. If you jump from the top, you'll take fall damage, and you'll fall down the roof no matter what. So. Over here. Jump down, go to Mumbo's. There's two notes in here you want to get before you transform. 
<coughs> you get the two notes, and then you become the pumpkin. Okay. Walk out. And then it's time to clean up this level. Get this jiggy. Keep going. Go under the wall. There's going to be a Momo token we want to get. Grab this. Jump over here. Keep going. So when you get in this room, you're going to get the last honeycomb. But make sure you walk out as fast as possible. Because if you wait too long, it's going to refill your health. And we are trying to do a death warp in this level. So you definitely don't want to be at full health here. That would be bad. Keep going. Walk around, get this token. Go down the toilet. So walk in the middle, cancel text, then you'll get flushed down. When you want to grab this jiggy. Walk back up. Walk out. If you match A really fast after a loading zone, you can do a hop like that while you walk out as the pumpkin. Walk over here, get the note, don't touch anything here. If you get the jiggy, jump. Get all the notes. If you move the joystick as you're falling down, you can miss the jiggy. So you want to make sure you're not touching anything there. So that would be bad. Keep going. So over here, we're going to jump around this gate. Where you want to jump from is standing on this little red dot right here. The one right next to me. Whoops. You know, the little red dot right next to me. This one. You want to jump from here, so you're going to jump forward, then jump around. Like that. Jump forward. Keep going. Here we're going to do a long hop. And do three short hops. Long hop. And then you'll land down here and you can grab the two notes. No problem. Over here, you're going to wait till you hit the lighter part of the area. Do a long hop. Land on the platform, no problem. You want to walk around. Get in here. Optimally, you'd probably want like two or three health here to make sure you don't die. But we'll do it with one health. Here, you jump uh, over the whiplash. Like this. Get this note. Walk around, get this note. Then here you want to do a long... So you want to push forward here, make sure you're up against the bucket. Do a long hop, and as soon as you get the jiggy, hold down. And you'll walk out right away like that. Walk around, get this. Over here, get the token. Jumping over that, get this note, and then die. Mache. And leave Mad Monster. Over here, you want to be a bit closer to the right side of the gate so you don't get hit. Keep going. And then walk down here. So here, we're going to be doing a hard reset on the console after this cutscene. So it's faster to go back to Freeze Easy Peak. One, two, three. You want to do three short hops there, then a long hop. You'll make it on top of there, no problem. Jump around, get transformed. So after the uh, the cutscene of the water going up is over and you have control of Banjo again is when you want to reset. If you reset too early, the game will have a hard soft lock where the water switch will be pressed down. Whoops. Wait for him to go around. Where the water switch will be pressed down and the water will not be up so you can never finish the game. So as soon as that cutscene's over and you can move Banjo again, reset. I will see you in a run. You'd want to do it faster than that, but... This is just to show you that like you're moving around, so you want to wait till that cutscene's over and you can see Banjo. As soon as you can see Banjo, press the reset button right away. Here, just smash start. Press right twice. Go back in your file. Come town trap right away. Keep going. Making our way to Freeze Easy Peak. So we're going to grab the Clanker's Jiggy right here. Because it's in our way. So we got to get it. It lines up perfectly. So we go over here. Hit one. Hit two. Go in the middle of the nose. Grab the Jiggy. Go over here, activate the second cauldron, make a pair, and use this to get to FP quicker. Be right next to it, which is why resetting there is faster. You don't have to walk all the way back and watch the pumpkin cup scene. You can just go right back. 
and make your way to Freezy Z Peak. Keep jumping, hug this side of the wall, and go in the level. As soon as you enter Freezy Z Peak, you want to go in Talent Trot and jump down here. Jump. Yeah, so you want to jump over here as soon as you get down the hill, and if you walk around this part, you're not going to trigger the bloggy cutscene. So you don't have to walk, or just watch the text box. Jump over here, cancel Talon Trot, Beak Bust the Box, or Beak Bust the Box. Cancel the text, jump for the tat wrap, run to the present, and chill here for a long time. So we're going to wait till there's 48 seconds left on this timer. And then... We're going to uh, keep going. So after there's 48 seconds left, all the twinklies will be done going through. The way this works, the enemies aren't on the screen, so the game doesn't register them to be there. So, you know. You just don't even have to do the minigame. You just wait here. There we go. 49. 48. Got a pound trap. Keep jumping. The last twinklies over there. As soon as it goes in, jump. Fall down. Grab all these notes. Here you want to walk a bit further after that note, so you de-aggro the ice cube, so it just goes back and it doesn't hit you. Aim for this, shoot three eggs, get this note. In this tutorial, I will not be covering Yellow Star, but I will show uh, I will be showing the most optimal way to do this part without doing it. I'm gonna go over here, get all these notes, turn around, jump, rat attack rat, jump over here. You're gonna use two feathers and beak bomb through the star. Whoops. Yeah, just like that. Turn around. Oh, use a feather. Turn around. Beak bust. Go through the star again, and you're good. As soon as you spawn, you're going to count four flaps. Jump, beak bomb. Jump. Use a feather, beak bomb. You're going to hit that. Use two feathers. Whoops. Two feathers. Beak bomb that one. Two more. Beak bomb this one. Turn around. <coughs> And we're going to use four feathers. Go around here. Beak bomb this. Whoops. Try to be on the uh, left side of the pipe to do this. Like that. And you'll get the jiggy. Kind of lone feathers, so I'm going to show where to get back up feathers. Go over here. Make sure you don't beak bust recoil onto the sled, because that'll make you miss this uh, mumbo token. So. It's just bad. You don't want to be doing that. Cancel the text. Roll into this jiggy, grab it. Jump town trot. Fall down. We'll get these notes later, so don't worry about it. Here we're gonna go in the tree. Keep going, keep jumping. When you get up here, you're gonna go neutral, jump, rat a tat rap, land on the outer edge of the pot, then jump under the tree. Like this. Then just do another jump and you'll hit the loading zone. Keep jumping up. When you reach the top, you're gonna go neutral on the stick, then jump, rat a tat rap into the jiggy. Like this. And we're going to fall down. Hold up left. Jump. Grab this note. As soon as you see the star, that's when you want to jump off. Right here, you see the star behind the tree. That's the last note. Jump off. Grab this present. Go neutral here. Wait till you land. Walk around. Grab this token. And make your way over here. So since we're low on feathers, what we're going to do... Grab a few here. You want at least 10 feathers here, minimum. 13 is fine. You have to grab all the extras though, but whatever. So here you want to aim a bit for the right side of the hat, because he's going to move a little bit as you beak bomb. Just like that. You want to turn around. Hit this guy. Keep flying. Kind of got a bad angle there, but whatever. Wait a little bit. Fly. Beak bomb. And you want to wait. Line the angle. Beak bomb. Use the feather right away. Wait here. Use another one, and beak bomb. Here you want to turn around to the left side. It'll give you a better angle to go into Mumbo's side if you turn around like this. Then you want to aim for the door, and you want to beak bomb, and you should get in. Just like that. Here you go in Town Trot, you want to wake up Mumbo right away. Jump on this pole, get this note, keep going. And after you miss one note like this, when you get the second one, that's when you want to jump down, and just, whoops. 
over here and transform. Pretty basic. Go over here, become the walrus, and walk out. Just walk down here. So when you're in the water, you want to make sure you're not jumping. So when you splash in the water, it creates a bit more lag, so it's a bit slower. Go over here. After you get three notes, we're going to go for the honeycomb. So one, two, oh, sorry, four. You get this note. Go over here. The reason you jump there is just to change your angle faster. That's the only time jumping in the water is faster. Jump over here. Make your way to Boggy. The race is pretty basic. We're going to grab a few notes under the leg and beat this guy. So Boggy rubber band just like Vile. So if you're behind him, he's going to slow down. If you're ahead of him, he's going to go faster. We're going to abuse that. Make sure we beat him. And also when you're going up slopes, if you're jumping, you go significantly faster in this race. So we're going to go over here, grab this Jiggy, grab these two notes, walk back around, go over here. So we're behind him now, so he's going to slow down, which is really good. And we're just going to demolish this kid and go way ahead of him by jumping up the slope. Keep going. Over here, on top of these houses, you're going to grab two notes on each one of them. The last one you're going to grab in the second part of the race is Banjo. Same with the Green Jinjo. So we're not going to pay attention to those. Here, you're going to want to grab the two notes in the water. Keep going. Grab two notes here. Keep going. There's a Momo token here. Make sure you get it. Boggy's just going to keep going fast. You want to pass him after this flag, if possible. Passing him before then, it might end up going too fast for you to be able to beat him. You want to make sure you're not ahead before then. Grab a few feathers there if you can. Jump down here. You want to grab these four notes around the box. Don't worry. He's further ahead where we're coming up the slopes. So we can just mash A and gain a ton of speed. And we just beat him. If you're lucky, you'll get a solid push here. I didn't. He just pushed me to the side. But he can push you forward if you have the correct angle as you're ending the race. Go over here. Do a jump. Get this jiggy. So Waza is one of the few exceptions in the game of a text box that you just cannot skip. So you're just going to want to old A here to make the text box go faster. Maybe you press L and R, doesn't do anything. Or L and R and B, I should say. So get this Jiggy. Get the four notes. Jump down. There's another Momo token here. You want to make sure you grab it. We're going to grab the next present. And then go back to Banjo. This is the only transformation in the game that you use twice during the world. So you can't collect everything in one go. Since you need Waza to be out of the way. So here, make sure you're pressing A. Jump faster up the hill. Just go towards Mumbo's hut. Same thing on this hill. We're going to be tapping A. Jump a bit faster. But on flat ground, it doesn't really matter. Here, I like to do a few hops. Jump on the pad. Transform back. Since we're done, we're going to go in Talon Trot. And walk out. Here we're going to do a short hop, wait a little bit, delay it, do another short hop, and as soon as we're about to hit the water, we're going to hit red attack wrap so we don't sink down to the bottom so it'll be faster. Whoops, usually it's a bit closer. But whenever you get hit by cold water like that, and if you're in town trot, you're just going to fall to the bottom, kind of like a quick dive. So you want to avoid that. Get those feathers there, get the health. Here you want to make sure your camera zoomed in, it does reduce a lot of lag. Let's grab all the goodies on the scarf, keep going up. Adjust the camera as needed. I don't really just do a short hop, turn the camera, readjust my angle every jump. Just to make sure I don't miss anything. Keep going up. Here I zoom out the camera. Here you want to go left. Grab this note. Go back. Get this one. After you get this note, go for the blue ginger. Jump back. Go over here, roll, jump. If you're low on gold feathers, what I like to do here is just cancel the jump really fast, grab this, roll, and get the blue present. That's not necessary. Here you want to use three feathers. Get up here, beak bust, cancel it. Before you get the last note on here, that's when we're going to grab the jiggy, because the last note lines up at a perfect angle to go back to the flight pad. So right here, that's the last note. We go back, get this jiggy. Go back in Talon Trot, get this note. I'm going to jump to the flight pad. Fly. Wait three flaps. Beak bomb a bit down. Jump. Double jump. And then damage cancel into the... Whoops. Normally you want to land on the top part of the igloo. And then just walk right in. But I messed it up. It's all good though. Jump here. 
you have the three presents on the table. Make sure after the blue present, you're a bit closer to the middle. And you should grab the jiggy right away. After this, so you gotta be careful here. Sometimes the camera can flip on you when you're walking out, but if you do two short hops after getting the token, the camera shouldn't move. So I'll show you an example of the camera moving. Like if you walk here, oops. You just walk like that, what the hell? That's weird. Remember the camera just flips around. If you do two hops, normally you're fine. But if it does turn around, then your angle is gonna change and you're not gonna hit the loading zone. So you wanna make sure you're jumping there. Here I like to swerve to the side and you won't fall down right away, like skip notes. And then for the last one, I just like to skip down and grab them. You can always just fall down and hold back a little bit on the joystick to make sure you don't jump over it. That works fine too. Get the token, that one note, get hit, get this health. Make sure you're at five. You need at least five health for the death warp. You don't wanna be below five. If you're below five, that's a problem. It's only high right here if you need extra health. Jump over here. Boggy is just like vile when you're banjo. You gotta hold A and then press A to accept the challenge. If you cancel text right away, the game will default to you saying no. So you're gonna have to talk to him again. Here, here's a pretty harder strat for the race. We're gonna go around the leg, get all the supplies, and keep going. Here I like to turn the camera. If you make a mistake here, usually you're just gonna not be able to collect all of them. If you're not comfortable with that strat, you can always get those supplies after you're coming back before starting the race. It does loot a fair bit of time. But it does make the race a lot easier if you're not comfortable doing that. Here we're just going to clean up what the walrus did. Get that one note. Get the green ginger. And get the last note. And we have a hundred. So here, like I said, you don't want to pass him before this flag. I'm passing him right now. So we should be very, very ahead of him. But he is going to speed up as you'll notice. Like he's pretty far behind now, but he's going a lot faster. Make sure you are tapping it here to go faster up these slopes, or you will lose the race. And boom, you just beat him just like that. No problem, easy peasy. We hear you're gonna jump, cancel Talon Trot, grab this cheeky. As soon as you walk off this platform, you wanna go in Talon Trot right away. Or just don't walk off, that's fine. Keep going here, keep jumping. There's two ways you can do this part over here. Uh, one of them is a bit harder than one isn't, but if you jump right a wrap up, up against this wall, you can actually get boosted up there. Oops. It's kind of an awkward angle. you got to get, like, this corner of the wall, just like that. Or, you can just high jump up here. It's really up to you. I'm going to get these two feathers, get the jiggy. The last jiggy. And keep going. Obviously, I have to watch the cutscene. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to jump down. Like I said earlier, if you get hit by water when you're in Talon Trot, you're going to fall to the bottom. So we're going to fall to the bottom and go straight into the hole. So you want to make sure you're in the right positioning for this. You want to be right in front of it, just like that. And you just keep going through it. So again, you need five health for this. This is why you need five. By the time we're done going through the tunnel, we're going to be down to one. And then we'll be able to die off the ice cube. Double jump here. I like to wait a little bit just to make sure I get more distance so I go, don't get hit again by the ice water. Just because I land on it again. Then you die here, go on Talon Trot, and walk out. So here we're going to be getting two layer jiggies. You want to jump out here, three hops. If you're low on feathers like I am, you can always just grab these four. And then you'll be fine. Jump. You don't want to jump over here. Roll. Go through this part. And hit the switch. I would highly recommend not jumping until you make sure you have the shoes here. If for whatever reason you miss the shoes here and you jump down already, you can always pause buffer this so you can just keep pressing start over and over again like this. And the timer will go by slower. See, like we're still like on five seconds, but we keep getting distance. You can always do that if you miss the running shoes. Go over here, beak bomb this, hold down, line up with the jiggy, grab it, use a feather. You can also nose dive down. That's a, a bit of a trickier timing. So if you're new, I would highly recommend just doing it feet down. Use two feathers here. Make sure you're holding up so you don't get stuck on the ceiling. And then just keep going through this. Here we're going to use two feathers. One. Two. Then we're going to wait. And then beak bomb this part and grab the jiggy. Should have used the other feather a bit later, but that's all good. Go over here. Get in town trot. Grab the shoes. Keep going. Uh, jumping down, you can also just roll and jump flutter into the shoes if you're more comfortable with that, but it is faster to do it in Talon Trot. Just because you don't have to wait for that animation. Hold R and B right away. You're underwater. 
aim for the left side of this pipe as soon as you go in, just like that. And we're going to be going straight up over here. Since we get up, we're going to want to jump right at tight wrap. There's two ways to get on top of this. You can get up in Town Trot, which honestly I don't think is worth it. Or you just jump right at tight wrap and go in Town Trot. Whoops. Which is a lot easier. So just jump, right at tight wrap, go in Town Trot. Long jump, right at tight wrap, break this box open, and do a short hop before the cutscene starts. Well, during the cutscene start. You can get a little bit more distance. And then you just want to jump flutter across to the RBB jiggy. And you should be good. Just like that. Try to get a quick talent trot there. That was perfect. Jump here. Break the gate. Go in talent trot. Hit the pedestal. Match C. And open up Rusty Bucket Bay. Everybody's favorite level. Here we're going to jump on this little crate, get these two feathers, and then jump out. Just like that. Here, just jump to the side. Wait a little bit, then enter swimming after you turn around. And just swim into RBB. To click Clockwood. I'm going to start the level and make your way. These five notes. Collect all of them and go in this pipe. Over here, you're going to jump down left and switch your angle to left midair to land on the platform. Just like this. Go over here, collect these notes, kill this Chompa. And here, I should probably have mentioned this, you want to have your stick go neutral before you jump. You want to jump and leave. <coughs> go over here, jump on top of the pipe, collect these four notes. Make your way to engine room. As soon as we walk in, you're going to walk down, fall down, and then just press A and then hold up. Like this. Go in town trot, do a short hop. Should have been honeycomb there, don't worry about it. Jump over here, get this token. Do three short hops, make your way over here, and get these four notes. Here, I'm capable of doing the fast cycle, just like this. But normally, you'll be a bit slower, so you'd want to wait for the rotation to go around. But that's an example of how you would do the fast cycle there. So over here, you want your camera to be centered towards the fan. Zoom it out. Then you're going to walk into it, take the image. And as soon as you're done taking damage, you're going to roll and then hold A. Double jump, hold A. You're gonna do this like pretty quickly. You wanna make sure your camera is also like actually centered. If you get hit on the rebounds on this blade, you're gonna fall into the pit. So if you have a good angle like that, you just hold A. You don't have to double jump, I lied. You just hold A. If you have a good angle, you'll get hit on the backside sometimes, but you'll fall back on the pipe. If your angle wasn't well adjusted there, you would just fall down to your death. Here you wanna grab these two notes. And this fan's a lot more lenient. Like you don't have to worry as much about it. I've never died to this fan in a run. It's honestly a lot easier. Here, you want to jump forward. Do not go into Talent Trot after this cutscene because if you do, the camera will flip around when you come back. And here, you're going to go in Talent Trot and move really quickly left to right against this window. And you'll clip through. Get these four notes. Go over here, jump, get up there. We're going to go straight down, go in Talent Trot, zoom out the camera, get this token, turn the camera. And get all these notes. Make sure you don't get caught on the metal bars there, because if you do, you're going to fall off the ship. Which would be really bad. Here, I should probably mention this. You want to wait after you're past the shadow, and when you're past the shadow, you want to jump towards this box. Get these four notes. Here, we're going to be doing a quick dive. Right here. Keep going. Swim down when you get past the hole. Grab this Jinjo. Keep going. Here we're going to go get the engine room jiggy, well the one behind the propellers. Go over here, zoom behind it, grab it, keep going. If you need to grab extra uh, air there, if it's a bit slow you can always land on this box and just jump, do a long jump and then you get all your air back instantly. Then you can go over here, so how we're going to do this is you're going to press A four times, then roll and jump right a tight wrap on the platform, so it's going to look like this. One, two, three, four, roll, red tat wrap. 
So you're going to do two rotations of double jumps so like this. Alright, right there you want to kill this Chompa. Jump over here, cancel it, get this Jinjo. Again, the way Chompas work, you don't want to be jumping in front of them or you'll always get hit and don't run against the wall because you'll get hit as well. So you just want to walk past them. Here we're going to jump to the side and get a little boost off of here. So the way this works, these work just like slope, but the water will reset your slope timer. So if you just curve to the side like I did, then jump off, you'll get a bit of extra distance. Same thing again here. Two double jump rotations, roll, jump front tat wrap. Here you're going to jump up, get all these notes, hit the switch. Pretty basic stuff. And we're just going to go up this ladder. Make sure you're on the left side of the ladder. And up here, you're going to want to hold up left. Get over here, jump in Talon Trot. So after this line on the crane, you can jump straight to the witch switch like this. But doing it earlier than that, you won't have enough distance. And you hit the witch switch. After that, we're going to roll down, double jump into boss boom box. So what we're going to do here is we're going to walk a bit forward. And as soon as you see the corner of him like that, shoot three eggs, go in Talon Trot, jump forward. Go in Gold Feathers, jump into him, and grab the Jiggy. It's that simple. After that, you want to go in Talon Trot, do a few hops, long hop, hit the ladder. And when you get close to the loading zone, just jump and you'll go right through it. So here, don't touch the camera, go straight in Talon Trot, hold down, do a long jump. We'll land on the platform and just keep going. Here, you're going to press B. Oops. Hit that window, go in. Hold up left here, grab this note. Keep going. Get this last note. Walk out. Here you're gonna hold down right. Hit the side of the fence. Then jump. Rat a tat wrap towards the ladder. Go in this room. Pretty short room. We're gonna jump in. Get four notes. Walk out. Just like that. Nothing else of importance in there. Hold down right here. Three short hops. Walk in this room. This room can be a bit tricky for new players. But you want to wait a little bit before you move here. Try to wait like maybe half a second. Then you want to start moving. Jump towards these two notes, jump towards this Momo token, fall down, walk on this edge, be where this middle red feather is, jump, jump again, and then jump to walk out. You gotta be careful with the camera play though, you gotta have like these little weights here and there to make sure you don't mess anything up. Here we're gonna apply what we know about Champas. you do not jump in front of them, and you walk against, like further back against the wall when you're walking towards them and you won't get hit. But we are going to be jumping though. It's going to look like this. Uh, it could be very daunting for new players, so you can always just walk past them if you really want to, as long as you have the correct angle. Whoops. Let's do that again. So you walk up here, and just walk down. You can just walk past them like that. If you're not comfortable jumping, it's pretty easy. Jump over here, get another boost here. Make sure you go through the water, reset your slope timer. Two double jump cycles, roll. Jump, rat a tat rat. Keep going. Wanna do long jumps here? Grab all the little goodies. Make sure you don't fall in the water. Keep going. Here you're gonna jump straight here and then jump back and double jump forward. So that the boom box can't hit you. If you jump further back, the boom box will most likely hit you there. Again, make sure you're on the left side here. Up left, keep going. And then we're just gonna jump down after the grating, double jump, and get this jiggy. So the way this cage works, it's never gonna go down until you pass a certain point on this box. And if you know where that point is, even when the timer runs out, you can still skip the cutscene. This point is roughly, it's kinda hard to explain, but it's a bit further back than here. So if we, jump, if we, if we do two quick jumps with the right pacing, we're not gonna trigger the cutscene. Whoops. I missed the jump towards the pipe, but if I had a better angle there, I would have made it in. But the the box is about right here, so you want to jump, or you want to start walking. Do a jump about right here, and then just straight in like that. And then you should skip the cutscene. Obviously, if you do it faster and the timer's still going, you'll have a bigger frame window, because the cutscene won't be able to trigger yet. So over here, just grab the notes, take the damage, get this moment token, keep going. Turn the camera here, you're going to cancel Talon Trot early, poop an egg, go in. 
What I like to do here is do a short hop, use gold feathers, kill this guy, and then get the JD. You can also kill this guy if you really want to, but it's not necessary. When you come out, you can just jump around to wrap and kill him, and you get two health. So it's not that big of a deal. And three health is the amount of health you want to have. Go over here. So here, you want to jump towards this bar, but to the right. You never want to jump like using any other angle to the right, because if you do, there's a chance you'll fall off the boat. If you just jump and hold right, you should make it on top here. And keep going. High jump. High jump. Keep going. Here, zoom in the camera. It's going to reduce lag. Get these four notes. Keep going. Same, you want to be towards the right here to make sure you're closer to the platform. Whoops. Probably a bit early there. Make sure the camera's facing towards this side of the level. It'll reduce a lot of lag. And just keep going. Over here, you want to turn the camera around. Double jump. Roll high jump, and you'll get the jiggy. Go on time right away. Here, you're going to want to do a long hop. Double jump. Hit the three. Three, one, two, one, one, one. Pretty easy pattern. Should be too hard to remember. We're here just for swag, do a beak bust, and then just grab the jiggy. And you need to make sure you don't forget this note on the red box. Jump down, open up this window, and then go in right away. As soon as we get in here, we're gonna go straight for the Momo token. Dodge these enemies. Whoops. I'll kill one of them for the extra health because I'm gonna need it. Then finish getting all the supplies and just walk out. Here, hold left. Keep going. Wanna run you wanna jump behind this guy. So if you jump to this side of him, if he hits you, you're gonna fall off the boat. So as soon as you come out, you just wanna jump to this side, and you'll never get hit. Here you wanna get the Momo token, jump against this railing, do a long hop, land up here, and collect all the notes. If you're not comfortable jumping around here, you can always walk on this grating. Press B twice there, break it, hold down left, double jump right away, and roll towards the jiggy. So here we're gonna walk over here, jump on this platform. Uh, if you have five health here, you can do a damage boost off of this Chompa. Whoops. But I don't have five health and I'm down to one, so we're not gonna do that. I'm just gonna click the four notes and keep going. We have to get extra health a bit later. Make your way to the anchor room. And here there's gonna be four Chompas in this hallway. Uh, the easiest way to do this, just to keep going, go over here, kill this guy, we'll grab the health, kill this guy, and then when you're walking back out, just hug the wall on this side and you'll never get hit. Go over here, I like to hit the anchor first, because after the cutscene's over, you'll have a better view of the room, and usually the little grubbin guys are always over the notes, so I like to have a better viewpoint, know where they are, so I can try to dodge them better. So, get all these notes. So we know both of them are near the corner here, so we want to try to dodge them the best we can. Where is this last one? Oh, he's right over here. So obviously you want to be at 3 health before we leave this area. There's a lot of enemies here, so it's not difficult to uh, just kill all of them and grab all the health, just like that. We're back up to 3. And just jump off this platform up here, hug the wall on the side where you killed the Champa, and just keep going. Get out. Make sure you don't forget the Dolphin Jiggy. So it's kind of out of the way, but you want to make sure you collect it. Swim down here. And here we're going to have Snacker. So what we're going to do, he can spawn in some pretty bad spots, but it's never too bad. So what we're going to do here is jump right attack rap into him, and the game will think he bit us, and he's just going to go away. Jump down here. Wait for the uh, our little anchor thing. Whoops. We'll wait for him to despawn. Wait for it to be bending down towards you. See how like, it just wobbles? You want it to be wobbling towards you, kind of like that. And when it does, you just want to do a long jump, and you'll skip the jiggy animation, like this. For that, you just want to go in Town Trot, do a long hop, Snacker will always despawn if you do that, and your hair will refill. And then you just swim towards this door. Just get up. Keep swimming. Go up here, I'm going to kill this Flotsam. Get the honeycomb to spawn and go straight into Talon Trot. Over here, you want to get hit by this Champa. Take two damage away, you'll be down to one life. 
If you're scared of this Fultzum, you can always use Gold Feathers. I just jump right attack wrap into him and it works fine. Go over here, wait for the Honeycomb to be at the top of the screen, wait one flat, Beak Bust, you'll get this Gold Feather and die. After the death animation, mash A really fast, and then you'll leave. And so we're going to make our way to Click Clockwood. Swim down here. Also make sure you don't forget the RBB Lair Jiggy. It's going to be right in front of us as we get out of this. Well, a bit up, bit up but it's going to be right there. On that platform, we want to make sure we get it before we head to Click Clock. Go over here, double jump, roll, high jump into it. After that, go on Town Trot, do two short hops, and get up this platform. I jump up here. Whoops. Not like that. Like this. And trigger the snow door. So as you come into this room, we're going to hug the left side of this wall and just walk straight forward until the second to last whiplash. We're going to jump past it and then go to the right and we should take no damage out of this room. Here's what it looks like. So hug the left side of the wall. Second to last one's upside down. Jump. Go right side. Boom. Just like that. Here we're going to do leaf jump. So what you want to do is you want to stand on the left side of this this dot right there. The really dark one. You want to stand on the left side of this. Then you're going to be looking forward to. That's important. Then high jump. Hold back. And then mash A. Just like this. And you'll make it on top. You also get a gold feather. After that you're going to high jump. Hold back. Go on Talon Trot. And then go left. Oh, whoops. Sometimes the camera can screw you over there. It's no big deal though. You can always just reset the camera, do the jump again. Whoops. We'll just reset this. If we go back through the tunnel with the camera looking the other way, we should be good. Kind of like this. Make sure you walk a bit further in and the camera should reset properly. It's kind of hard to do this jump if the camera changes in midair. There we go. So high jump back up here. Go back in Talon Trot, walk left, and the camera should switch like that. And get these three feathers and keep going. Hit the switch. <laughs> Jump down here, two short hops. And we'll trigger this cauldron. We activated the other one a long time ago before Clanker's Cavern. Now we're going to be using it. You shouldn't go in Tom Trot there. That's my bad. Just jumped straight into the cauldron. If you're ever low on gold feathers, you can always grab the one behind the cauldron as well. Go and Talon Trot here, and walk out. Then we'll jump up here. Here we're going to do a quick dive. Fall to the bottom. Swim. So something I should mention right now is that we have a tool for this game called the Furnace Fun Calculator. That if you give it correct or incorrect Grunty questions, it will determine what pattern you have and give you the correct set of key of answers for the Grunty questions in Furnace Fun. So if you have that tool open right now, you can go to this Brentilda, get the three answers from her, and then put it in the calculator, and it should bring your pattern down. You don't have to do this. Personally, I do in runs, but this is totally optional. I'll have a link in the info section to download the Furnace One Calc. I'll probably have it in another part as well, but yeah, if you're going to be using it, talk to her, remember the three questions, and then put them in as you're completing the uh, Click Lockwood puzzle. If you did Gobi Clip for Gobi's Valley, and you didn't get that extra token, Here's where you'd want to get the one other extra token. This one. And here you just complete this. So this would be the cutscene while you enter the questions to the calculator. Just fits perfectly. Here, just go in Town Trot, do a long jump. I'll get pushed underwater with the tunnel. Just keep going, keep swimming. Hug the right side of the wall. Goes a bit faster. And make your way back to the cauldron. Go over here. Use the warp cauldron. Whoops. Use the warp cauldron again. And now we can finally start Click Clockwood. Make your way over here. Just go up the hill. I like these on the camera here, but it doesn't really matter. As you enter Click Clock, you want to go in Talon Trot, jump down right away. Hit the switch, and quickly go in Talon Trot. Now 
Make your way over to spring. Jump over him. Go over here. High jump on these leaves. You can skip these three notes as we'll get them later. Jump over here. As you get to these birds, you want to jump around them. Here I like to grab a red feather in case I'm low and keep going. You shouldn't worry about egg count as there's more than enough and click lock to complete the level. Go over here. We're gonna go open up summer. We're gonna jump down here. Don't worry, doesn't actually matter. It's gonna reset your position. Go over here, grab these feathers. Grab this Momo token. Here you want to go to the right side. Break this egg. Over here we're going to do a long jump. Double jump down, take fall damage, cancel it, and get the three notes on the ramp. It's going to look like this. Just tap A lightly. You'll have perfect pacing. Get these notes. Whoops. Want to put five eggs in there. Trigger the flower. Get this note. Keep going. Get these three notes. Here you can jump under this bird. Whoops. Shouldn't get hit usually if you have the proper pacing. Get these three notes. Jump over here. And get this mobile token. Now we're going to make our way to summer. Make sure to grab these two notes. Should be a 15. If you're low on health, you can always grab some of this health here. Just like that. Go to summer. As you enter, you're going to do a short hop and cancel text right away after the second one. Just like that. Keep going forward. Get this caterpillar. Get these notes. Go under this bird. Make your way to the beehive. If you're uncomfortable jumping around the birds here, you can always just kill them instead. But, just do a short hop. Whoops. It's a bad angle. Yeah, if you just jump a bit outwards and come back inwards after you're past them, you should be fine. Get these three notes. Open up the beehive. Go in. Roll. Double jump. Land in the middle. And then just use gold feathers here. As soon as the last one hits, you want to cancel text right away. And you'll land on the GU. Make sure you're on the middle of that platform. If you're a bit to the side, you can miss getting the jiggy right away. Over here, we're going to go to the left side, do two jumps. Jump, cancel Talon Trot, high jump, and get out. Here, we're going to go to the side, do a ground pound recoil, and get Gobi. Let the flower grow. After that, we're going to get the caterpillar on the other platform, go open up bottom. Just like that. And kind of a delayed jump there, so I had to cancel Talon Trot, but if you jump close enough to the platform, you don't have to. <coughs> Double jump here. Go on Talon Trot. Make your way to the beaver's house. Over here, we're going to jump on top of the rock and use a gold feather. Should be a four right now. Perfect amount. You can also be a three. Which is a bit riskier, but it's fine. Got all the supplies here. Get the scatter pillar. Keep going. Now 
And we're gonna go up the tree from the leaves. Whoops. Shouldn't get hit by that. It's my bad. Here we're gonna do three three hops. Cancel Talon Trot. High jump. Get to this jump pad. Then go grab this Jiggy. You can avoid killing this bird if you want to, but to be safe, we're just gonna kill him. You wanna wait for him to come out first, because if you jump right or start rapping to him before he's out, there's a chance he's gonna hit you off the platform. And you wanna high jump, grab this token, go over here. Get this caterpillar. You can get this Jiggy in summer that's inside this hut, but we're gonna skip it and get it in autumn. It's a lot safer. Here you can jump on the back side of the bear snare. Uh, the ways or the snare bear. The way these work is the back side of them don't have a hitbox, so you can jump on the back side and keep going. No problem. But just don't get too close to the eyes of the front side of them, or you will get hit. Go over here, get these five notes. Get this caterpillar. Sometimes this guy can be in the way, but he shouldn't be much of an issue. Here we're gonna trigger the birds to come out, do a little rotation, and jump. Do it again here. Jump. That'll give you perfect spacing to make sure you don't get hit by the birds. Feed Eerie here. If you're low on Momo token, there is a Momo token here you can grab. Uh, optimally, you would go to the left side of the nest. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to go to the right side to show you the Momo token. You can also grab an extra feather here if necessary. Double jump. Whoops. Get this token. Jump. Cancel Talon Trot to get enough distance. Get this Caterpillar. Jump down. Go in Talon Trot. Jump towards the yellow ginger. Grab him. Make your way out of summer. Now we're going to Autumn. Again, you're going to get an E-Read text box after the second jump, so be prepared to skip text. Just like that. Go upright, get this caterpillar, make your way over here. So we're going to trigger this bird to come out, and then go grab this note. When we come back, he's going to go away and we can get this note safely. Here, just wait. Grab this note. Make your way over to the snare bear. Use gold feathers, get these three notes, jump down, and make away your way to Mumbos. Just like this. Should make it just fine. Just come in here, you're gonna grab this caterpillar. You can do the same thing I did in Bubble Gloop here. You can turn around like this, have Banjo facing towards the pole, and it's easier to get up here. Just like that. Start going right on this rotation. There should be four notes here. After you get the fourth note, jump down and leave. Now we're going to go over to the Gobi area. Well, flower area. Whatever you want to call it. If you're at about three health here, that should be perfectly fine. I'm at four. Let's grab a bit of extra health. Get a bit of extra damage. Get this caterpillar. Make your way over here. Wait for him to chomp. Get this note. Keep going. Get this note here. Then fall down. Enter swimming right away. Go to the beaver's house. You can get this jiggy in winter, but it is significantly more difficult, and I would highly suggest getting it in uh, autumn. Okay. Now we're going to go over here. This is why we need the two extra gold feathers. Just make sure we can get the three notes on the bear snare over here. And I'll be showing a backup strat for this. So let's say you do run out of gold feathers. Like I said, you can stand on the back side of them. So here you could like jump to the top, get these two notes, and then jump recoil. Whoops, jump recoil. Get the last one. Optimally, you wouldn't get hit, but it can happen if you run out of gold feathers. If you have the proper amount of gold feathers, you don't have to worry about that. Whoops. Make your way over here. Go hit Gobi for the final time. I never have to worry about him again. Until Banjo 2. 
Make sure you're skipping the, skipping the text box here. As Gobi will have something to say. But you don't want to hear it. Make your way over here. Get the caterpillar. Get these notes. And you want to get the orange Jinjo. Here, if you're low on health, you can always kill this guy. Get an extra health. Being at 2 health is really dangerous in this level because the birds do 2 health's worth of damage. Here, just get the notes. Here, I like to jump to this side, trigger him, grab the supplies, and keep going. Jump to this platform. Here, we're going to kill all three birds. because We'll be coming back here later, and you want to avoid getting hit by them. This Greblin, you can either kill or not kill. It's a lot safer to kill him. You don't have to worry about him. It can be pretty random sometimes. Jump down here. Here, you want to go a bit right. Fall down. Get this note. Get the caterpillar. Go around. Then we're going to leave the bee high like we did in summer. So two short hops. Jump, right attack, wrap. Roll, high jump. If you lose a bit of height, you can beak bust too. And you'll make it. And we're going to keep going up the tree. So here we're going to go grab the jiggy we skipped in summer. So you want to make sure you get this Momo token first. Get this, jump back. Oops. Go over here. If you ever miss a caterpillar for whatever reason, there is a backup one on the platform if you need it. That's like the only really convenient one. But after that, we just walk out. Go over here. Ignore the snare bear here. Just jump down on the platform. Hope the camera doesn't screw you. Like that. Don't worry about this buzz mom. Very likely he won't hit you as long as you're not jumping near him. Make your way over here. Open up this window and jump in. You don't have to do the jump across like I did there. You can always just walk around the platform if you don't feel comfortable doing that. Get this acorn. Swim out. Here you're going to go neutral. Turn the camera. Do a long hop. Try to be further away from Nabnut so you don't trigger his cutscene. Or old like text box. Go over here. High jump. Peak bust. Grab this. Jump around. You can recenter your camera if you want to, or just jump straight for the acorn. This acorn has a really, like, the acorns have a really weird hitbox that so can be pretty tricky sometimes, so you want to make sure you have a correct angle to hit the middle of them if you can. Here, you don't want to go too fast because you can skip down and fall down. Go a bit slower. Grab this acorn. Make your way to Nana's house. Here, we're going to jump on the desk. And the best way to do this is to align Banjo Shadow to be like against the shadow on the platform. So like a shadow going across, right? You want to line it close to this line, then jump and hold up. Just like that, you'll make it to this platform, no problem. So just line it up with this line, jump up, hold up, and you'll make it. Jump around here, get this, then walk out the window. Hold right. Skip the text. Turn the camera around like this. This will give you the least amount of lag. And then just wait for Banjo to give him the acorns. Skip the text. And get the jiggy. Next, we're going to go feed Eerie. But this time, there's going to be some pretty scary birds. So you can jump across these birds. And uh, just av avoid them, not even kill them. Uh, but I would highly recommend if you're a beginner, just go around and just kill the birds. It's a lot easier. Whoops. Yeah, so you can recover there if you double jump and jump back on. Uh, one thing I should have mentioned is the last bird is on a different timing than the other birds, which is what threw me off there because I don't, don't normally kill them. So, yeah. But you can recover like that if you ever get unlucky and get hit by him. Open up winter. And then go feed Eerie. Uh... Yeah, so you're going to want to do a rotation around here to this side, actually. And leave one note. Make sure you're not too close to him. If you're, clo if you're too close to him in autumn, when he falls down, he can make you clip through the nest. So you want to be a bit further away if possible. Keep it safe. Sorry, I just normally do a different route in my runs. So I, to I normally do a different rotation around the nest, that's why. 
because we're going to jump back down to go get the uh, flower jiggy. So skip the text here. As you can see, like if you're like around where Eerie's head is, he's going to push you under the nest. I were further back enough that it won't matter. But if I was a bit further ahead, I could have gotten clipped out. So here we're going to get this note and then jump down to where the birds were. Which is why you wanted to kill him earlier. You can avoid killing them if you want, but it is a lot safer to just get him out of the way now. Well, earlier. Then jump down here, double jump, grab this jiggy. So we're going to be doing a void out clip here in autumn to finish the level. So you're going to jump to this platform, fall down, and the way I set this up is I go up here, hold Z, hold R, and then align the grass to be up with the wall, and I go in town trot, turn the camera once. And then you want to aim for this little black dot on the ramp. I'm facing it right now. So if I move, there's a little black dot, you want to just be facing it like this. You're going to jump, go a little bit forward, and hold up left. You'll get caught on the ramp, then you should void out. Oops. Could be a bit tricky. Whoops. Should get it soon enough. Just gotta get caught on the ramp first. Just like that. Whoops. Come on. Oh, that should have clipped. This clip can be pretty finicky sometimes. And I'm not used to doing it in autumn. So. We'll get it eventually. Hello. Okay, we'll reset the camera. Sometimes if you're just getting like really bad angles, it's a lot more difficult to get. Whoops. Come on. Ugh. What the hell? I remember it being that different in autumn than it was in spring. What the? Okay. Turn the camera. Line up. Hello? I don't know why I'm not clipping there. There we go. What? <laughs> wow, this game is really messing with me today. I just won't clip. There we go. Okay, sorry that took so long. I'm just not used to doing it in autumn anymore. But now we're going to go to winter. But yeah, if you use that angle and that setup, it shouldn't be too bad. Just got to practice it a little bit. I'm just not used to doing it there anymore. With the rod ID, we do it in spring. Here you can grab this as a gold feather. Just for a little insurance. Keep going. Grab this Momo token, and then you're going to want to use 10 feathers and a beak bomb against the wall. The reason we have 26 is because of the Gobi clip route that I was showing, and how you get an extra token. It's supposed to be a 25. 10, beak bomb, mash talent trot, get in talent trot. Keep the camera facing this way, it will reduce lag a lot. And then get these four notes, turn it around, and there'll be a lot of lag. I want to jump down. I like that I have the camera at this angle, because if it's facing towards the bridge, there's a high chance that it's going to flip on you when you roll down. At this angle, it shouldn't flip on you at all. You hit this, bounce into the snowman, makes it a little bit faster. And then make your way down. Just like that. Go back to the flight pad. Use six feathers and the meat bomb. Here you can try killing him with a beak bust if you really want to, but it's not necessary. Poop an egg and get in the door. Here I jump right, down right, and then into the jiggy. Just like that. After that you can just jump straight up. Up left and just leave. If you didn't kill him, make sure you don't jump into him by accident. Here we're gonna grab all these notes. Jump down. Start over here. Go in talent trot. Double jump, use this flight pad. After we get the blue Jinjo, we're going to wait for him to be at the top of the screen. We're going to use nine feathers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hold up, go towards Eerie. That should be a perfect angle to grab the Jiggy. The Jiggy's also going to bounce a little bit as it falls to the ground, so it should be a lot easier to grab it during that time frame, so you want to grab it as soon as possible. After we grab the Jiggy, we're going to use three feathers and beak bomb towards another Jiggy. You'll see in a minute. Hold down. One, two, three. Beak bomb. Land up here. And here what I like to do is zoom in the camera before you jump down, then beak bus recoil down. It's right next to the platform. You'll land right here. 
And you want to line yourself up. And the reason why is you in the camera so the snowman can't hit you. He just never spawns. So. And then you want to line yourself up with this line. Like I'm right next to it right now. There's like a blue line on the little log. You want to just line your shadow next to it. Poop and egg. Get the window. Jump down. Go in. Jump. Red attack rat. Get this honeycomb. Jump back. And then leave. Here you're going to walk out. Go neutral. And then turn the camera. And then go towards the snowman. If you ever need another backup token, a good one is the one at the end of this bridge if you absolutely need it. If you noticed you were low. And we're going to go over here. This guy's in a really bad spot, so we're going to opt to kill him and start flying. Here I like to juke the snowman a little bit. When he throws the snowball, I just turn like this. Shouldn't get hit. You want to hold down. Beak bomb as you're about to land while holding down. And you'll clip through. Over here, we're going to fly a bit down. Use one feather. And get this honeycomb and turn around. We're gonna do the same clip but on this side of the wall. Beak bomb. Mash B, and you'll avoid that without taking full damage. Keep going. Get these two notes. Shall be missing three after this. Yep. And we're gonna make our ways to Mumbo's. Same way as before, we're gonna go up the leaves. Just do a few high jumps, and you'll be good. Roll over here, go in town trot, get these three notes, and go to Mumbo's. So make sure you're not jumping too high up from that side of the platform, because you can take fall damage there, if you're not careful. Grab this feather for good measure, and turn to the B. So the timing there, the transform, is after Mumble's done shaking his head is when you want to start mashing B. If you mash before then, you're just going to bear punch in midair. You want to avoid that? Go over here. We're going to press A 11 times. Make sure you're holding B as you're doing this. Also hold R. Whoops. Kind of messed it up a little bit. That's fine. Oh. We're going to land right here. It's optimal too. So you would land if you don't mess up the movement like I did trying to explain it. And then you grab this Jinjo. Dump down. Start flying. And then go into Beehive. Just like that. Let's so come in here. Hold B again. Only press A once. After the third bounce of the Jiggy, you want to jump down. You'll grab it. Press A once. Hold B. And just go into this corner and you'll clip out. And void out. So that's going to be it. Or actually, no. We'll do the rest of this. So just jump. Uh, we'll do that up up till. So here it's five. Five A presses. And you'll land on the platform. Or you should land on the platform. Just mess it up. So land. Jump down. Turn around. Open this note door. Should have all 900 notes now. And all the 10 jiggies from the lair. Into this loading zone. Here I just like to mash A and B and then cancel text. Oops. Do it twice, get transformed back, and then we're making our way to Furnace Fun. This is the last stretch of the run, and Furnace Fun can be a bit tricky. So we're going to head in here, and uh, we'll get the quiz underway. Fortunately, I do not have Furnace Fun calculator set up. So Grundy questions are going to be a bit random, but that's okay. We'll make it through. Uh, normally you'd want to be in Talon Trot here. Kind of forgot. But you want to start skipping text right away. For Talon Trot, you can do one hop, cancel it, start the first question. So when you're answering questions, you want to make sure you're holding A and B as the text does go by faster. And then just answer the correct, or just grab the correct answer, right? So here it's a magic carpet. Do that. Obviously, you want to do it as fast as possible. But you want to be always holding A and B at the same time. These are the only text boxes in the game that do go faster if you're holding A and B. The other ones you only have to hold A, but in Furnace 1 you have to hold both. Here, hold A and B. Then you want to mash A and B. This is Click Clock Wood. Then we get the answer right away. Answer Click Clock. Usually when I'm using the Furnace 1 calculator, what I like to do here is answer this grunty question first, as it will help your pattern. And since we're going to go to a Joker Square over there, that's going to help a lot. So if we do get a granny question on the Joker Square, we don't have to worry about it. Since our pattern is going to be better, so we have a higher odd 
I'm not getting it wrong. So this is completely random. You get a random pattern. I don't know what this one is. I'll go with this answer. Nope. Usually in a run, you want to be using the Furnace Fun Calc to help. We'll get it eventually. Favorite magazine. I'll go with this one. Nope. If we get another one wrong, I'll just start using the calculator. We know it's not Rad Bagel, so it'll be Tadpoles. Yeah. I'm actually going to open up the FF calc for the next few ones. Uh, give me a minute. Okay. Let's keep going. Go over here. Massive handle. There we go. It's pretty basic. You just go through. So the sound questions, uh, you want to answer them as fast as possible. So it's like the screen questions if you mash A and B. It'll bring up the answer pool right away, so you want to listen and do it as fast as you can. Let's try this. Sex or honeycomb? Just like that. Again, if you're not comfortable doing it that fast, you can wait a little bit. Make sure you hear the full sound. Normally, it's like level music. Uh, maybe if you're not comfortable, don't mash A and B right away. Make sure you know the answer, then go for it. And the Joker Square. Answer is presence. So Dorker Squares, you're going to get a random answer. It could be anything. So it could be, you know, a game question, sound question, visual question, granny question, which is why I like to do the other granny square before. But uh, as you go to these squares, make sure you're never pressing B. Make sure you're always pressing A so you don't use your Joker cards. That is very important. That's eight. There we go. Here we're going to use our first Joker card. Press B. Skip it. Keep going. Another screen question. Machine B. You know, that's Clankers. Look for the answer. Go for it. Going up on the Death Square, they're kind of like Joker Squares. So you're going to get, you know, a random question. Uh, it could be anything, but if you get it wrong, you are going to automatically die. So you want to make sure you get this one right. It's a honeycomb. Go over here. So we get a screen question. Mash A and B. That's Clankers. Boom. Past the death square. Another grunty square. So here I'm going to use the furnace fine calc. It's telling me spotty purple. That is incorrect. So the... The more you get, like, bad questions, the better your pattern is going to get. So the more likely you are going to get a correct question. Here he's telling me ripper. That is correct. Right, that's good. Mumbos. There we go. So here we're coming up on Arb Skip, or some people call it Furnace Fun Skip. It's TTC. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to get a... Here you're going to press B. Use your Joker card, obviously. Yeah. So we're going to get a question wrong on a death square, and we're going to get knocked back onto the board. Oh, whoops. Got it wrong. Wasn't paying attention. It's all good. One and four. Six segments. Alright. We're kind of up to the last kind of question. You gotta just use the furnace fun kill. Didn't think I would get that bad RNG. But I did. It happens. This is why we have the furnace fun calculator to help out with that. So this is the score we're gonna get the question wrong on. So you do want to make sure you get this wrong if you get this correct. Uh, there's always a backup one that you can use. Which is the first death square where the time trial passed is. Uh, the setup for that honestly I'm not comfortable with and it's way less consistent. So I'm not going to bother explaining it, just because it's honestly like really bad. I've never had really good luck with it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to slowly come up to here, right to the corner, and we're going to turn right, and you want to make sure the Banjo's left foot is on the Grunty, uh, grunty Square, and the right foot is on the Death Square. So you're like in the middle like this, and you just press it. So the one on the color of the Jinjo, I know that the answer is blue, so I'm going to say black. That's our for sure wrong answer since no Jinjo in the game is uh, colored black. So we land back on the board here. Make sure when you're walking over squares like this that you don't press A since if you do you're just going to like re-enter Furnace Fun. Here what we're going to do is we're going to do a short hop and then mash B right away to rat a tat wrap across the board. If you're not comfortable doing this you can always walk around but you need to keep in mind that the barriers are gone so you can just walk straight off if you're not careful. Here jump, mash B. 
and you just walk across like that. Here, you're just gonna wanna go back in Talent Trot and keep going. And that's Furnace Fun in a nutshell. It's not too bad. So using the Furnace Fun calculator, it's not that bad. So over here, you wanna make sure you're on the left side. If you're too close to the right side, you're gonna tr trigger this cauldron cutscene, and you wanna avoid that. So you wanna jump over here, jump back, until Talent Trot, open this note door. Yeah, make sure you go around and you don't accidentally uh, trigger that cutscene. Back in Talent Trot, go over here, Mass Z, and open up the door. So here, if you're low on feathers, you can always grab the extra feathers. Usually I don't, but I will for the purpose of this. The feathers are to your right as soon as you get in here. First in the door here. Open it up, grab the red feathers, and you want the blue eggs. Those in RTA, you never want to skip. Also, if you're you know new to the final fight, you're not comfortable with it, you can always open this note door, which will lead you to the double health room, and you can get the double health upgrade. I'm not going to be doing this because it's not necessary, but if you feel like you need it, you can always go for it. But we're going to walk over here, 828 note door, and we're going to get the blue eggs. You can also get gold feathers if you really want, but they're really unnecessary, so I just recommend not going for it, and the gold feathers are behind that note door. So... Into this text, jump in here, and then we're going to the final fight. Oh, whoop. as soon as we go up there, it's gonna be a text box to cancel, so we're gonna do that. Then, as soon as the fight starts, we're gonna start running backwards towards the edge of the top of the castle. So, we're into this wall. I like to turn the camera around, run into it, let go neutral. As soon as Grunty starts to laugh, beak bust. Whoops, you should normally cancel that, and then start pooping eggs on the top here. Metal pitter. Then beak bus recoil to get that, and then shoot three eggs. That should get her. Usually I like to go on this side. Shoot three more eggs. Just like that. Hit her. Keep going. Shoot three more eggs. These are actually really good. Usually I shoot six just to make sure, because sometimes some of the eggs from the first three can miss. Shoot six. Usually you're good. Didn't miss a single one there, but I still wanted to be careful. Cancel bottle stacks. Beak bus recoil all that. Start flying. Aim from Grunty and mash B to beak bomb right away. Then you want to turn around. Wait for the shoot. Use one feather beak bomb. Turn around. Here she's going to shoot two. Beak bomb. Now she's going to shoot three. So this is the easiest shot. She just stands still. You can still hit her. Just like that. Just need to get used to the timing of the fireballs and where she's going to be after X amount of fireballs. It's a bit tricky, but you should get used to it. Here she's going to shoot two fireballs, and after that, the ginger statues are going to spawn. We're going to be sitting over here, next to the grate, so to the right of this grate. We're going to poop three eggs. Hopefully get all three. Yep, and that's the Jinjo cutscene skip. So she's going to get hit by the Jinjo during the cutscene. Just like that, cancel the text. And then you can get closer to the statues, but personally I like to stay further away from them. Also, if you walk around in circles like this, she can't hit you. So she's always going to aim for where you're going to be, but if you're running in a circle, you're never going to be where she thinks you're going to be. So shoot three eggs. Shoot three eggs. So the Jinjos always follow you in this game. On where you're standing, like say like the Jinjos where I am right now. So if you jump really quick, they're going to hit Grunty right away. I'll keep that in mind. Whoops. That should work. There we go. I'm gonna grab this health just to be safe. Go back in the middle, jump, boom, gonna hit Grunty. And now she's gonna do another volley of fireballs. Make sure you dodge all of them. You can just walk in a circle. And if you get hit, she's gonna reset. And you have to wait until she shoots the green homing ball for the engineer to spawn. So make sure you don't get hit here, as you do lose time if you do. You want to be closer to her, so you cancel that sooner, so the Jinjonator spawns faster. You just walk back, wait for it to spawn, cancel the text. What we're going to do here is wait for her to shoot a fireball, then go up to Jinjonator, shoot three eggs, and rotate around, and as we're rotating around, she shouldn't hit us. So wait a little bit, go. Oops, I screwed that up. Oops. Yeah, anytime she will hit you, she's going to restart her rotation, so the green homing ball is not going to happen. See now it's happening now. Big bus recoil. Shoot five eggs. 
boom, you're done. So yeah, the rotation around these, the way it works is you just want to shoot three, then two, three, then two. When you only have to shoot two, you don't want to shoot three because then you have more time to move around and not get hit by the fireballs. Well, yeah, uh, timing for the run happens after you're done with the Ginginator. Timing obviously starts when you start your file after FFM. And that is how you do Banjo Kazoo 100%. Final fight again can be a bit tricky, like I was a bit low on health there, so I mess around in front of fun. But if you're not comfortable doing the fight with only the regular health bar, I would highly recommend just going for the double health, it's not a huge time lost. And uh, you basically can't die in the fight unless you fall out of bounds with that. So, bottom bounds, I mean, you know, endless bit or whatever. So yeah, that's Banjo Kazoo 100%. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully, I'll see you do some runs sometime soon. Peace.